Hello everybody and welcome back to the Uncensored Anime Podcast, a podcast where we talk about all things uncensored, things to do with what? You guessed it, anime. And today we are your hosts, I'm David, we got Jerry, we got Kenny, and today we're just going to hop right into the episode because we have way too much to talk about. There's been a lot of news in the anime world, but we don't care about that. We don't give a shit about news because today... What's going on? Jerry, he's he's, he's dying. We're mid-intro, Jerry. What's going on? (laughs) Do your thing, David. Do your thing. We don't give a shit about Uh, all the news that has been going on in the anime world. Oh, we only care about episodes of the fall anime 2021 season and we're not doing 13 today spoiler alert we're doing 15 because surprise surprise, this season's jam-packed so jerry anything you want to say before we kick it off i'm so sorry that i was laughing david said (laughs) he said this is the way david talks for you sometimes it's it's because he said i can't he said we talk about everything uncensored and uncensored and he went you guessed it we talk about anime (laughs) You forgot the word anime. No, I didn't forget. That was all intentional, Jerry. I'm trying to switch it up you a little bit. It. Come on. We talk what? about anime. Oh, this my sort of like, What is What Bro. episode number is this? Did you say it? Oh, this he is episode 44. 44. He said this it. 44? 44. 44. 44 what are we doing for 50? I don't know. Maybe we should do something for 50. That'd be cool. Shirt, shirtless? A mu- mu- uh, shirt, yeah, no, uh, shirtless hot podcast? Hot tub podcast? Hot tub podcast? Hot tub stream? Hot tub stream? Okay. It's already getting cold. Oh, well, wait, yeah, it is listeners, cool. okay. viewers at home, yes, we're back. The boys are back in town again after we... Well, there's not been much of a hiatus since our last episode, technically, when this one comes out. But, obviously, we've taken some intermittent breaks over the last month and a half or so, which is whatever. We kind of mentioned it in the last episode you guys saw, but we're mostly going to be back from this point forward. And today, we're getting into our fall... 2021 anime season first impressions this is something we've done every anime season since we started the podcast where we watch essentially a season's worth of anime uh but just in first episodes so that we can kind of give you guys the first impression of all brand new shows and that's the big thing about this is we don't want to do returning shows we don't want to do things getting their second third seasons blah blah, blah. we want to give you an opportunity to hear about 13 and in this instance 15 brand new anime this is their first time being on air we want to give you guys our first impression so that potentially you can find your new favorite show that's the that's the whole hope and goal of this podcast that we want of not the whole podcast but specifically this episode that we do every every anime season and i know we're coming in a little bit late most of these shows already have about five episodes aired as of the time this podcast will go live i think only four or so of each have come out right now one yeah. main reason that we kind of push it back is that comey's official translated release didn't release until very late. It was essentially when episode three aired in Japan. Episode one came out here in the U.S. So we kind of wanted to delay it. We wanted to make sure Comey was included in this episode. I think only two episodes are still out as of this recording uh, with the official release. So uh, that was important for us to include that. Additionally, we've been really busy. So we knew we were going to kind of delay ourselves a little bit. Just getting all this stuff watched and uh, kind of giving you guys our first impressions. But here's how the First Impressions podcast always works. If you are listening at home, we'll make sure that we acknowledge this uh, vocally as well. But essentially, me, David, and Kenny are going to give you a brief summary of the first episode of each of the 15 shows that we all watched. After giving a brief summary, we'll discuss some of the main elements about the show that we enjoyed or that we didn't enjoy or what we felt was cool or wasn't cool about the first episode. After doing so, each of us, me, David, and Kenny, are each going to give each show either an up thumb sideways thumb or a downwards thumb and i'm sure you can guess if you're listening at home if this is your first time joining us on the uncensored anime podcast i'm sure you can guess an upwards thumb means that we really liked it and we plan to continue to watch that show this season a sideways thumbs mean that we enjoyed it but we're not sure we're going to continue watching it throughout the season and a downwards thumb means we plan to drop that show and not watch it anymore even after just one episode which we would not advise to many of our listeners at home many people like to give it three episodes before dropping a show but for some of us here, me specifically, I can watch. I usually watch one episode and just drop the shit out of stuff. So <laughs> I'm a piece of shit, and that's just the way things work. So no, I'm joking. Um, but for real, uh, you know, if you can sometimes know from one episode if you're really going to enjoy it, right, guys? I mean, we've done this so many times. Like, yeah. there, we've learned that, like, sometimes one episode can be enough of a factor. But a lot of times we'll give some sideway thumbs to shows that we think we should give it the three episode rule, which is pretty standard in the anime community. People watch three episodes where they drop or continue a show. And this all makes pretty viable sense in my mind. 
But yes, that is the explanation. That's how we do our seasonal reviews. Um, for those of us, for those of you that are returning listeners that have been with us for the last couple seasons, thanks for coming back. This is our. We've now made it to a full year, right? Because yeah. fall fall of 2020 was our first seasonal first impressions that we did. So we yep. did every season since then, and now we are doing fall of 2021, and we're kicking it off. And this is a wild season because David mentioned it. We had 13 shows picked. And honestly, there were two shows in addition to those 13 that we felt were making enough buzz that we went ahead and added those. So we did 15 shows this time, 15 brand new anime that are in their first season. We watched 15 new shows. Um, the, the, and I mean, you guys will see as you listen to this podcast why we had to watch some of those extras. Just because there was enough buzz around some of these other shows that uh, we felt like it was necessary to watch them as well. So, yep. um, boys, y'all so- ready to... <laughs> Are ready to be judged. Starting with yeah, judgmental. So, so do we want no, to just... do we want to list them all all fifteen first to give the viewers an idea of what we're going to be talking about today, and then we can go into our first one. How's that sound? So for those of you joining us, here we go. And yes, fair warning: there will be spoilers for the first episode of these shows. Even if we have read the manga or watched ahead, we're going to try not to talk about any relevant details beyond the first episode. So as long as you've also watched the first episode, you can certainly listen to our first impressions. Um, or if you're if you're willing to get some spoilers about what the first episode's about, then so be it. Watch our first impression and then potentially go check the show out. David, give them the list. What are our 15 shows that we're going to be that we watched for this seasonal review? All right. So our first 15 se- uh, series that we're going to be talking about today. First will be. The Vampire Dies in No Time. <laughs> I, sorry. Irina, on, the David. Vampire <laughs> Cosmonaut. The Faraway Paladin. Deep Insanity. The World's Finest Assassin gets reincarnated in another world as an aristocrat. My Senpai oh. is Annoying. Visual Prison. Sakugan. Miruko-chan. Tact Op Destiny. Ranking of Kings. Platinum End. The Hike Story. Blue Period. Komi Can't Communicate. Boom! Fifteen shows for you. Oh, so I forgot. I forgot half of them. Sheesh! <laughs> if you're listening here on YouTube, there's going to be annotate or what are they called? Timestamps Time down below. Yeah. So if you want to skip ahead to any of the episodes, uh, specific things, go ahead and skip ahead. If not, join us on this journey as we go through fifteen brand new anime for the fall 2021 anime se- season. David, take it away. What's the description of our first show that we're going to be talking about today? Now the first show is called "The Vampire Dies in No, no Time." This is a comedy show. And it's literally, you know, picture Castlevania, but Belmont goes up and he sneezes on the vampire and the vampire dies. And so in this first episode, basically what happens is we meet our two main characters, which is uh, a vampire hunter and the vampire who is supposed to be, you know, labeled as uh, the, 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 the uh, progenitor of vampires. He's super scary, super strong. We meet him. What and, would you? What? How do you pronounce his name, David? Because uh, I could not. Drow- is it Dr- Drowk? Drowluk? 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 I think Drowluk. Drowluk. The the conj or the hiragana is Duraluk. Du Duraluk. Yeah. Is it? That's I'm what it is. Prob- that's probably that. what it is. It's, it's a Dracula. I think that's what, how you say well, it. It's Dracula, Dr- but Dr-Luk. they like swap some letters because they. I'm sure they wanted to Dr-Luk. avoid copyright. Maybe. I, yeah. They sh- or Dracula's probably to open domain. Yeah. Oh, he's a pose. I mean, that's that's a good. That honestly would be a funny joke, Kenny. Oh, and he's yeah. a Dracula poser. He's a Dracula poser. <laughs> he's and actually Dracula's brother, Dracula. 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 Yeah, we meet Dracula later in the show. That would be actually oh, that'd that'd be pretty funny. That would be hilarious. <laughs> honestly, funny, my favorite character is John. John the Armadillo. John the John, Armadillo. John, John, like, John the Armadillo. <laughs> We fell in love with the, the fucking armadillo. That armadillo was amazing. I, I, I lo- he was in the, the <laughs> earlier scene. He was the, the ball. Stole was, the show. They stole the show. But um, stole the show. I kind of got like dude. not really for some reason. I thought Gintama as I was watching mm-hmm. this, but I mean Gintama. There's a lot more breaking the fourth wall, which didn't yeah. really do any of that. But uh, I don't know. Just like the kind of like the sporadic type of comedy, which is like random things popping up. <clears throat> um, yeah. But but yeah, I mean it's a it's comedy. Uh, apparently this show has been going on, so, so this is also being adapted by Madhouse, which... Oh, Madhouse is doing this yeah, show. so Madhouse is doing this show. Why are they doing this show? Uh, I didn't realize that was Madhouse. They another show. Yeah. Also, <laughs> also, I didn't know that this show, so this show has 18 volumes of manga. This show was created Holy shit. in 2015, and it's still going. It, it runs in Weekly Shonen Champion, same as Welcome to Demon School, Iruma Kun, and there was another one I saw oh, wow. that I thought was interesting. I like that one. Um... 
Oh, your Weekly your Lushi Sh- pedal. Saint yeah, Shea. Weekly Shonen Champions a pretty uh, a pretty well known one. Yeah. So yeah, and this is still ongoing. So there, I mean, there's a lot of material for this show. So interesting, which is, which is interesting. Um, uh-huh. So yeah, I liked it. I enjoyed it. What you What you boys think? I didn't funny. think that it, I didn't realize it was a weekly shonen. That's kind of interesting that it's run, it's a weekly shonen comedy. Yeah, that's interesting. I for some reason thought it was like a light novel or some shit. You know what I mean? Like uh, I, never, I never know with these shows. Nowadays, like what, yeah, I feel like everything's you never fucking know. Um, I don't know. Ah, uh, little, little, little kitty. <laughs> I'm just waiting on the gag manga Sakamoto days to get an anime. I just you know, Draluk or whatever. I'm never gonna go back into focus. I guess. Yeah, we'll see you later. No, I'm just... Oh, okay. <laughs> oh we found you. Draluk, not as funny as Takamoto. You know, no, I just... What? But, I don't know. Yeah. This is... Yeah, it was just like a... You know, some gags are funny, and some are still funny, but not my funny. And so, like, I was just like... I watched it, and I was like, okay. Yeah. I think there were two jokes that made me laugh in this episode that I remember specifically. One is when... The fucking Draluk like arrives in the room and he like sets off the booby traps for the kid in the in the vampire hunter, oh, and yeah. the kid had like accidentally switched the direction of the of the trap. It just fucking kills him. And I was like, I thought it was the air conditioning. I don't know why, but for some reason the setup, delivery, and punchline of that, like I was laughing. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, this is so stupid. <laughs> the second. Was the <laughs> the armadillo? No, no, no. The second half of the show, you know, they go to the convenience store, right? And you know, he is like taking the late, turn me into a vamp, blah, blah blah. And then when he explains like why he was doing that, she like comes out and she's like, "Oh, I only told you that because I was just trying to let you down easy, dog." <laughs> I don't actually fucking like you. <laughs> I lost my shit, Kitty. Was like, oh, I was like, like, I'm leaving for this 30 year old man who's rich. Yes. But yo, David, I laughed so hard, bro. I was actually laughing my ass off for that. I don't yeah. know why, but like, I thought that was incredible. Like, just because the setup took like a whopping like five minutes just for that joke. Yeah. For, for some for, reason, oh, I was just pretending. I found that to be the funniest shit. <laughs> that the fact that the whole convenience store steen like that was the punchline that she was gonna go leave for like some fucking old man rich old man <laughs> i don't know why that that killed me so yeah it was about the gags yeah there was enough small jokes to keep me entertained mm. but like yeah i mean kenny kind of nailed it it's like yeah, i don't I'll, know i'll probably put it on if i'm eating yeah. sometime you know right. like right 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 I, I don't know. I don't know about y'all. I, this show had me dying. Like, every single joke, I was, like, physically, like, laughing out loud. Yeah. Okay, guys, I don't know if I'm everybody just, like, simple, get the comments. Simple, you know. No, I mean, I told you, the two, those two jokes got me good. Like, I, those yeah. two, in two solid jokes in a 20-minute episode, two that, like, make you gut bust are, like, that's a good, like, joke-to-episode yeah. ratio for sure. Yeah. Everybody get in the comments. Uh, this is the first uh, anime this episode that David loves. He had a thumbs know, up. He's gonna give it a thumbs up. <laughs> After we get through fifteen more thumbs up, no, I'm just... fifteen more thumbs up. Yep. Will David like every show we watch this season? Find out next time. Maybe. Maybe. No. We'll see. We'll see. Um, here's the thing. yeah. I think this show is really funny to me, but it, again, it's like I don't. I'm just not a big gag, I, and this is, might be a me problem. Generally, like. I'm not gonna. I, I'm just not invested in like gag anime or manga. Like I don't. Yeah. There's very few that I like want to sit down and like really put time into. Um, and the shitty part about like when you're watching an anime of a gag series, generally when I'm watching like an American sitcom, I can like have it on in the background. You know what I mean? Like I can have it running yeah. while I'm like doing other shit. When you're watching an anime, you have to to get the jokes. You have to be reading the subtitles. So you have to be focused on the show. So you're really committing like your full attention to a gag series, and that's like one of the reasons. I mean, it's one of the reasons I've never watched Gintama. Honestly, it's because it's just so many episodes, and I just don't like for something that's like comedy based. I'm not generally gonna like be wanting to like sit there peeled to the screen. Now, if there was a dub, I'd probably actually be more inclined to watch it. Which is like I don't usually watch dubs. I I don't usually fuck with dubs, but sometimes with comedy stuff, I like the dubs a little mm-hmm. bit because yeah. you can watch it while you're doing other stuff. 
But uh, mm-hmm. so maybe if it, do you guys know if Vampire Dies No Time has a dub already? Is it getting simul so. dubbed? Uh, well, it was so on, it, it's on Funimation. <clears throat> it was, um, yeah. I don't... Usually takes a little bit, at least until I think, episode I think five. There is, I think there is an English dub already because when I was watching the first episode, there was English as an option. Uh, be, I mean, honestly, I know that sometimes with these shows, they'll wait like, you know, episode one of the dub might come out when like episode three or four of the sub comes right, out. Right, it's so. like staggered. Yeah, and Funimation especially is known for kind of doing that. So maybe it'll be fun to watch dub, though. It might be something, like you said, Kenny, you throw it on while you're like eating dinner or something. Don't have anything yeah. else to watch. I yeah, could see that. I'm confirming, All right, boys. I'm confirming in real time. Uh, no, yeah, Japanese, Portuguese, or Spanish are the Damn, like, available okay. audio. Hey, I mean, right you can watch it. Spanish. I can watch it in Spanish. No, I'm j- I don't speak Spanish. Um, uh-huh. Okay, boys. Oh, you don't speak Spanish? Guys, another time. Let's do it in three, two, one. What is our thumbs? We're going to do... Fucking David. God damn it. Also, I, I, I just want to say, I don't know... Like, when I watch a show, I watch it. I don't get people that, like, put shows on and just, like, do other shit in the background. Like, let's just play it in the background. Like, because I don't... If I do that, I, I don't know what's Kenny. happening. Kenny, bro, does he do that, dude? Okay, only with Naruto. Only with Naruto. Okay, <laughs> only with Naruto. But it's Naruto. Naruto. I know. I know. I'm pretty Naruto. sure he's uh, not awake whenever the show. Yeah, he, has to, he has to try a couple times yeah, sometimes because yeah. he because he fucking falls. I'm either asleep watching it or I sleep through. I That's genuinely not watched him watch the first episode of Miracle Chan three times. <laughs> oh my god, David! <laughs> it was hard. Okay, bro. Wait, I, I, would, I have some things to say about Miracle this Chan. Man, I wait, like wait, it. Hold, hold it out. Hold out, hold out. Well, okay. well, All right, so it's coming, it's that's our first show. So are we ready to move on to our second show? I yeah, David went with an up thumb. I went with a down thumb uh, because I'm just an honest person. I probably won't watch any more of this show. Unfortunately, it's not that it was bad. Hey, I just don't think it's something years. I'm going to put more. T- and I do have to. Oh, I forgot to mention, it was actually really beautifully animated. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Did you guys well, notice that? They was like, go do something else. I mean, it's Madhouse. They're wasted. I, I didn't realize go. it was Madhouse when I was watching it, but I remember thinking, like, why is this show so well animated? Yeah. Um, but now I know why. Oh, um, and the opening oh. song? Both mm-hmm. opening and ending song? Oh, it was a banger. I it was, was a banger. And apparently, fun fact, so Daisuke Ono is a voice actor huh? in the show. I don't know. He voices his character. I don't know if like how minor of a character this is, but apparently he also yeah. sang the ending song. And oh, Daisuke so. Ono is a voice actor for... Jotaro Kujo. Jotaro, yeah, yeah, I knew that. So, fun fact. Hmm. One time I watched listeners. a live stream that he was on for four hours, even though it was supposed to be two hours, until five <laughs> in the morning for them <laughs> to announce. Finally. Stone, we were Stone Ocean. Oh, part six, Stone Ocean. Ocean. Hmm. Yeah. Part six, Stone Ocean. Okay, cool. Well, then, uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, Kenny, right. you're going to take the description. What's our show? What's next, the next one? Next show is Arena, the Vampire it's Cosmonaut. Good, good Oh. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, Arena the Vampire Cosmonaut? I'm yeah, pretty sure you... this one... I can give you the description of the show straight away. This is literally just Vampire Waifu the anime. Yeah, it literally... He's not wrong. He's not actually lying. It's Vampire <laughs> Waifu the anime. That's all it is. Literally. Literally, that's literally you just slowly fall was. in love with the vampire. Oh, I thought... Oh. Oh, uh, David thought... I mean, oh, David. I, oh, no. I, oh, oh. Oh, There's nothing well, else the to is, I thought David, you you oh, no nothing. No, nothing, I must have watched a different show because I thought Arena, nothing, the Vampire nothing, Cosmonaut, nothing, was about nothing. You know, nothing, uh, a, a character called nothing. I think one of the characters uh, named Yuki Cross. Uh, at, Yuki, uh, Yuki Cross. Yeah, Wait, and, uh, no, you know, they they go to school. There's vampires. There's romance. Love triangle. That's your title, Vampire Night. I think that was uh, the show I watched. You guys yeah, know the time. Right, 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 right. This time, that was David mm. himself. David, think, you searched uh, Tag it in the comments. Tag it in the comments down below. David has dropped the Vampire Night bomb tonight. Vampire Night tag in the comments down below. Give us a we mention Vampire Night. Uh, but Kenny's right. This show is literally. This is just. Uh, this is Vampire. I, it was literally like not even anything else. Like I don't even know like, what all this like. space shit. So for context, this is one of the shows, listeners, that we added in to our original 13 because there was just a lot of buzz around it for some reason. All the other YouTubers were talking about it. People were talking about, and then we watched it and I was like, why the fuck did I waste my time on this? It's because people think this is cute, brother. I was, you know, that's why everybody's like, damn, Aruma, Arena or whatever her name is. What the fuck's her name? Uh, Uh, I think it's uh, number, number four, four, six, six or something, whatever her number. number, number, And and 44, something like that. I don't know. In 44, I think you're right, David, something yeah, like that. 44, some bullshit like that. Okay, so... There was not even a goddamn plot. Can I be totally up? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is. The, there is the a Russians plot. are spinning, sending a vampire to space, dog. That's literally what it is. 
I guess so. Yeah. They're like, the we, it's, are like sending... it's a loophole because we're not sending a human. Vampires yep. are human, so we can send a, we can send a vampire. Kenny, they sent a dog. They sent a dog before her, and the dog died instantly. Did you see, you see that scientist bro? cry? That scientist was Yo. sad. Was so sad. That was so they can't. They can't love the 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 thing anymore. Yeah. They can't love the, the potential dog. candidates anymore because everyone loved the dog, and then when he died, people were flustered. So sad. Dude. Yep. Bro, he's gonna fall in love with the vampire. <laughs> Obviously, he's gonna fall in love with the vampire. He's gonna make little vampire babies or whatever. The fuck. Oh my god. Okay. End up living in the countryside of Japan or some bullshit <laughs> like that. What about her mouth, guys? Jerry, I what, can't what, be more her, clear. Her, her, her this was the no, most. Do you guys remember the scene where she was like eating and she like, she, like <laughs> tongue that <laughs> thing? Did you guys? Man, yeah, that's this what that thing is. Yeah, I, be I, more don't, clear about I don't know why. Why was this so well animated too? We got like a shot from like inside her mouth. We were like seeing the back of her teeth. Like, nang, nang, nang. I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> like, How did you feel, yeah, Jerry, when you saw that? When you saw her eating saw that vampire peas, girl's one mouth, pee at a yeah, time, right. what'd you feel? I was like, "This is some mouth uh, fetish shit." I don't know what's happening right now. It was like whenever Kakuin licked those goddamn cherries. Yeah, yes. <laughs> that was fucking weird. It was I was just confused. Is all I was just yeah. confused. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know, guys. What I've got? Yeah, I've got uh, nothing else to say about this show. <laughs> I don't. This is so much fan service, and then like exposition for 10 minutes yeah the opening endings felt like songs like out of the early 2000s um the I, fan I didn't, service I didn't care for them yeah they were both personally. just lame they were bland that's the word i would use the i mean the directing and the animation was fine but it wasn't like as good as some of the other shows we watched but it wasn't as bad as some of the shit we've watched before you yeah, know what yeah. i mean like yeah. it was road. totally palatable um yeah, what was the company david that did this one do you know arvo animation was the oh, animation studio, and they have done. They make done, hentai. They make hentai. They have done. Stop kidding. We, we never learned Boku Ben, which I guess is a side story of oh. We Never Learn. It's okay. probably like the second season or something, maybe. I don't probably, know. I don't know. And then Monster Girl Doctor, which cool, is so hentai. No, I'm sure. it's a light novel based off a of light novel. Uh, Arena the Vampire cool. Cosmonaut is also originally a light novel. Oh, okay. I could have told you that. You could have probably be, uh, me. <laughs> Oh my god! Okay, cool. A hentai, I mean. Well, yeah, I just feel like for this show, like if you want a vampire sundere waifu show, then like I guess you could like watch this one. I I just don't know any other way to put it. Like, it there wasn't a lot going here. There, I mean, I mean it was she's fine. a sundere waifu vampire. What yeah. did she say to that guy when she first walked to the cafeteria? The guy's like, huh, you got things? Huh? And she was like, shut up, I hate you, or some shit. I was like, she was like, like oh, you're, she was like, you're an idiot. I hate all humans. You're an idiot. Shut yeah, your like, fucking mouth. You're an idiot. <laughs> all humans. I hate humans. Yeah. Bro, that's what? that's what all the boys are looking for right there. They're looking for that someone is... to just talk down talk down to them, dog. Yep. They're Whatever. waiting for her to her to turn all red and be embarrassed, okay? Oh, and it's but coming, Kitty. It's lifestyle. coming. I know. It's coming. You know it it's coming. People are going to say their number one is going to be Arena. I already know it. Do stop, think, stop, stop, stop. Do you think she's going to turn our main boy, what was his name, Lev? Into a vampire? Turn Lev into a vampire? Mm, I don't know. I mean, she already said she doesn't drink blood. So, yeah. like, how, how does she even change people into a vampire? You well, know what I, I mean? Like, she, she eats peas, Jerry. She eats peas one pea at a time. I'm, I, 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 she said something like, because uh, he kept, you remember they saw the cross, and he was like, he was like, ah. and she was like, what? Crosses don't hurt me, bitch. Yeah, she, um, she was like, humans make up stupid shit about vampires. Like, Yeah. yeah. It's like, okay. All okay, right. Yeah. Okay. We've talked too much about this shitty show. <laughs> we spent a lot of time on this. Okay. Um, Arena, boys. Three, two, one. What are you guys putting? <laughs> David. David, brother. I might. I might. <laughs> I like vampires. Come on, Kenny. I like vampires. Come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. So, oh, for the record, the Kenny and I both are... A, I'm surprised Kenny loves a good Sundere, but... Um, I do, but this is not. I mean, it's just... This was not for Kenny. Kenny I'm and I both have answer. decided to... I, I'm curious... This show. I'm curious about where the plot goes. I thought the animation was really oh, well are you, done. Are you curious, are you curious about where the plot's going? I'm curious about man, where the plot's going. I'm pretty I sure, David, if, if the, they're going to send her into the atmosphere. I'm curious where it starts. Um, <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> Shit. 
All right. Okay, we can move on. Yeah, there's not no, a lot to say about I'm that. Excited. I'm excited for you to... Uh, you, honestly, uh, David... I'll let y'all know how it goes. I'll let you know this, how, yeah, yeah, show me how it goes. Tell this me is the type of show that when we do the seasonal wrap-up, you're going to be like, guys, Arena, banger. One of the best ones of the season. It just came together. Yeah, that, that'd end, be you know? Visual Prison. Come on. Come on. That'd be Visual Shut Prison. Shut up. Oh, I don't even want to uh, talk quick, about Visual Prison. Quick aside about another show that we watched. We watched last season, 86. Um, I was totally fucking right. I had never been more right in my life. Um, it's so obvious, uh, and it's, but it Wait, low-key kind Obvious about what? Uh, every, nobody died. Nobody died. The end of the last season when you were talking about it, I remember yeah. you talking about this, yeah. It's Wait, like, you, oh, you, everybody's you said, dead. No one, Wait, did you watch it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I the new season the started. Season. Yeah, yeah. But low key, the politics are finally interesting. Look at David's face. He like just he like, just realized he was like they made more. No, <laughs> I, I knew there was a part two, but I got spoiled. But oh, well, it's okay. It's the first like twenty seconds. The, the, they yeah, literally no. like wake up. Oh, like, whoa! Where are we, David? You really, you really thought you really thought Anna. a fucking basic show like that was gonna kill everyone? I I think that would made it good. Cool. That would made it good, David. David, that is a show. That is a show for for brain dead humans to watch that's you know what i mean like 86 is like it's like it just sucks. enough just enough politics and just enough ass shoving just enough to get you by you know it's so it, upsetting it, it, it was like man but i was like entertained i was excited kind of excited i guess to see part two but yeah if everyone had died i'd i'd actually come and watched it i just started watching it more because i'd be like no. wow any show that is like ballsy enough to kill everyone fuck i'm in yeah. i'm in I then mean, i'd have one to of go back drew me into attack on titan Yes, dude, that's badass. Okay. Aaron, Aaron didn't die, so. David. Well, well he's beat shit. Um, I will take the description. What is our third show? The Faraway Paladin. Oh, hey. balls. Okay. All right, so The Faraway Paladin, everybody. So the first episode of The Faraway Paladin sets us up in a world that at first we don't realize, but later realize is uh, the main character is being has been isekai into a fantasy world. So yes, the, the main character has been reborn into a fantasy world as a young child, and similar uh, to Mushoku Tensei. But the twist up here is that they're being raised by... I think they described him as like demon or some Demon it's monsters. Undead. undead. Undead, that's the word, yeah. The, instead of being raised by a normal family, the the our main character is being raised by undead, which they take the form of like a warrior skeleton man, a ma- like a master wizard man, and like an old priest essentially, priest woman. Um, and the three of them are raising him pretty standardly uh, under the expectation that he's a human, um, but obviously they have some deep secrets that they're hiding, and that's sort of what we uncover throughout the first episode. That there's a little bit more underneath uh, their kind of. Uh, outward appearances uh, because they all seem pretty wholesome on the outside uh, but clearly there's a little bit more at play as we sort of uh, kind of uncover what that is but that does not seem to deter our protagonist from trusting and respecting these three undead and wanting to learn what he can from them in this new world that he's woken up into that's what we kind of get out of the first episode um david what is this based off of and who animated it so this is originally a light novel Mm-hmm. Um, this was, I was wondering like when this was made, it was made in May of 2015. So this was after like our, our like our initial rounds of isekais of like ReZero and, uh, Michelle Katensei. Yeah. This is clearly inspired by Michelle Katensei. Like yeah. I don't know any other way to put it. It yeah. feels that way at least. Yeah. That, I was getting the same feelings too. Um, this is, mm-hmm. uh, animated by children's playground entertainment. They don't have a wiki, a wiki page. So I don't know what? if this is their first work, but I thought the animation was Pretty beautiful. Very impressive. Very well done. Yeah, kind of on that same... I mean, if you remember, Mushoku Tensei's anime studio formed... with the inti- to make to ma- Mushoku. Yeah. yeah. And so what if this studio and, also formed... I don't, I don't and, think... And I mean, may- I hope maybe that's the case. I don't know. Maybe? Um, I, I don't know if I would go with the name of Children's Playground. It's kind of... Yeah, interesting name for an animation um, studio. If Why it is the- for this purpose. But anyway... <laughs> I mean, there's just now, kids Kenny- playing on the playground... Kitty, I think this is the first one. So you have you I've read, you read the manga version of it? Yeah. Mm. Right, but it was originally a light novel, right? So it's a manga yeah. adaptation. Yeah, so I'm not obviously I'm not as far as the story is. Right. Like, and it also means novel. the anime might pull elements from light novel that the manga left out or things like right. that, but it might not be a direct adaptation of what you've read. Um, yeah. Honestly, guys? I, I liked, liked this one. I liked it. It, this it, is it one gave I, me Mushoku vibes. Yeah, this is one I actually like a lot. Uh like I don't know. 
I, reading it, I really enjoyed it, I guess. Any time that you could introduce a character and immediately put them in, like, sort of uh, character-building circumstances, I think that always works really well. In the first episode, we get specific scenes. I can't even remember. What's the protagonist's name? Do you guys remember? Mm. Um, is it William? No. Will? Oh, yeah, Will, William? I think. Another, it's, a, it's a simple name like that. Yeah. It's because it's like Rudy. That's why. I think yeah. it's literally like the same thing. Yeah. Whatever. So Will, or the protagonist... There are three scenes in the first episode where essentially Will is alone with each of the undead, and we get a little bit of some unveiling of what each of their purpose, thought processes are, and we get a little bit of Will's character start to develop, why he's interested, what's going to come from this, blah, 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 blah. And I think that that sort of character building can really set a really nice tone for a series like this. When, when you are constantly getting surrounded by isekai um, and constantly being bombarded by in another world is my fucking dildo or whatever these shows are going to be called next. You know what I mean? It's really nice to have something more character driven. It's nice. It's nice to have something that's character driven for once. You know what I mean? When an isekai can be focused on character development, as opposed to trying to uncover or unwrap some big world, clearly they laid some elements of a job. They, I mean, you guys saw like, you know, with the gods and shit that they're they're kind of alluding to. There's yeah. some elements of a yeah. larger world here, but this episode didn't exposition dump. You know what I mean? Yeah. It didn't waste our time on that. It went right into building the characters and letting that kind of be the, the, the base for what the show's going to be. For me, I like character-driven shows, so I was immediately kind of drawn into it mm -hmm. um, as opposed to a show we'll talk about later where I felt like the exposition was way too heavy. Um, yeah. yeah. I even but, feel like this this <clears throat> show, this manga, I feel like it expositions after like the first arc. I feel like the whole first arc finishes and then we sort of learn, you know? Mm. I like that. You build up the world and you let things exist in the world and then you slowly uncover the secrets of that world. I think that's a yeah. cool way to do a manga and a story. So uh, I was definitely bought in. But that was my biggest observation. What do you guys have? Mm hmm. Like I said, I I enjoy this one. This is one that I I don't know. I really like the 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 little wrinkle that they're all undead. I like that. Yeah. That um I like that he is isekai, and I like that his like you know an isekai character always has some sort of I don't know something they hold on to, and what he holds on to is that he wasn't really appreciative of, of the family he had, and so yeah. like uh, he, in this he was world. I'm happy he wasn't like a fucking, uh, you know, like a piece of shit in the first yeah, world. Like, that's, yeah. I feel like he's the guy who's love to have like dumpster fire piece of shits that like get revived yeah. and have a second chance. But um, <laughs> nothing implied that this guy was like a piece of shit in his first. Yeah, time. it only gave us the vague. That's also something I liked. It only gave us such vague. Like he's like, I just yeah. feel like I didn't appreciate, you know, these people, and I sort of know this understanding of foods from my world and that sort of, you know, like yeah, yeah. Like, I kind of I, I hope that it does expand more upon like what he was like in his previous life. Cause Mashoku does that a little bit with, um, with Rudy before he, when he was a, in his like previous life. And I do kind of enjoy like, kind of like the back and forth of that. Um, yeah. And, and something else that's similar to Mashoku that's in this is that I think this person, we see him age kind of in, um, like as the show goes on, we kind of see him learn all of these different, you know, abilities and skills from, um, the three undead that are raising him. And that he kind of goes off on his own little adventure. So that also makes me want to definitely keep watching to see kind of how he how he um, learns and adapts in this new world and kind of you know kind of uncover the mysteries along the way. So nice. yeah, this yeah. show was really good. This it was funny too. Yeah. Wait, was there? Do you guys remember there wasn't an opening song? Was there on this one? I, I don't think no. I think this one had no I opening. Think, I don't think it had an ending. Did it have an ending song? I think it had an ending. You're right. Yeah. Maybe I think I was assuming that the ending was the opening. I think that's yeah. what happened. I haven't watched that movie, but either, so. me neither. So, and that might have been it. But I liked the song that I remember it yeah. playing on yeah. the show. So, yeah. I everything. Oh, that's a pretty cool song. Um, but overall, it was really It was really beautifully animated, and I think that's another thing that I just really respected about it. I just, um, I don't know. I just so many shows this season looked really Anim nice. Animation this season, you know what I like mean top notch like for no reason like i was like yeah. oh this is this isekai looks beautiful and this fucking vampire show looks beautiful and you know what i mean i was just like what's going yeah, and on then i was upset uh, about one particular show just having same, animation, so. same yeah. damn it yeah no i know exactly which one we're gonna which <laughs> which, which is a really good segue i heard the company is it the next one is it yeah. the next one 
Oh, fuck. Okay, okay. let's do our well, thumbs. Let's, let's do our thumbs. So, three, two, one, boys, what are we doing? I'm going to watch this one. I'm going to watch this sure. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm, you guys know, if you've listened to the podcast, I am not an isekai guy. This is probably the second isekai we've ever watched on the show that I actually think I might watch episode two, honestly. Yeah. Like, I, well, th- actually, <clears throat> I might be speaking too soon because there's another isekai that we're going to talk about later that I also might really want to watch episode two on because I really liked the first episode. Um, okay. Yeah, we only watched one other isekai, didn't we? You guys oh, oh, okay, okay, yeah. I, I was liked like, the first episode. I had to so look at one. all 15, and I was like, okay. That one Wait. was good. That one was good. Oh, see, David, like, okay, we'll talk about it. I know you're talking about it. We're getting into it. But, no, but seriously, I think that this is, I, I, so I gave it a sideways thumb for those listening at home. David and Kenny, you guys are a little isekai little isekai punks honestly. i do like, i like guys, i like isekai david's gotten into it now and kenny's always been an isekai punk um uh, so you guys will like it and it looks this one honestly i could respect someone who liked this show because i actually really liked the first episode yeah. too so that no, was really good <clears throat> all right all right so David, you're you're, on, you're describing yep show number four and personally i think is the worst of the 15 deep insanity oh um, oh Okay, so, that's a, this one is tragically bad. Is this one like a video game? Right? This one's like tragically yeah. bad. So to give a little oh, context, this one's bad. so a little context before like talking about like the actual episode one plot. So Deep Insanity is, and this is all from Wiki. Uh, so this is a hundred percent true. Um, Japanese mixed media project created and produced by Square Enix. So I think this is it's like it's like similar to what. Um, Fuck, what was the show we talked about last season that's kind of based off of a game? Oh, no, no, no. I know exactly which one. Uh, no, it was called um, uh, Scarlet Nexus. Scarlet Nexus, thank Scarlet you. Nexus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of similar to that type of, of um, I guess, creation. And so so Deep Insanity, so what we learn in episode one, and we kind of learn a lot, um, but basically it's in the future, and there is a large crater that is made in the north pole that is and it's discovered like oh there's this giant crater and so there's a lot of uh exploration that begins and i can't remember the name of what these people that do go that go and explore are called um i think they're called sleepers and i don't know something stupid yeah and then what happens is they go and explore this place and in this place there are monsters it's basically kind of like a like a alternate reality a different um, place where there are there's like resources there's monsters and the monsters are done in shitty CGI so it doesn't look appealing at all and our main character you didn't, li- wait, you didn't like that first monster they fought no in? that, that looked like dog shit Jerry <laughs> like hey, absolute, this show. I can't believe it looked like a Playstation 1 monster I was gonna say PS2 I was gonna say PS2 but then I realized that's a disrespect no. to PS2 it, it, it looked like, like, like a, it looked like a one. Sega Dreamcast monster yeah. like it it did not look good that I would not expect it. and it's kind of sad because like the animation the 2D animation I thought was pretty alright but then yeah. they introduced the CGI and I'm like oh this looks so bad and so our main character, he wants to be a hero for some reason, and he wants to. David, jo- he joins the sleepers. Did you remember what he said? Oh, he's like, I just want to be a hero. He just wants to be a hero. Dog. I just want to be a hero. I just want to be a hero. Be a hero. He, he literally he, what, he gets asked what like getting? two to three times. He's like, he's like, like so why are you doing this? He's like, I just want to be a hero. Just want to be a hero. He's like Deku. Okay? Blah, 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 blah. He's like, I just I just want to be a hero. And then Make all of a sudden hero. he goes from not knowing how to use his equipment to all of a sudden mastering it. And he's Dustin like, he's bitches. Like, he's like, I got it. Rip, 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 yeah. rip. Like, bro, I'm no ha- one, no one told him how to use it. I'm happy we brought you on. And I'm like, this is a random fucking kid. <laughs> he just wants to be a hero? He just I wants to be a hero. So, so that's really it. I hated, so, I hated everything about the show. I didn't, yeah. Yeah, yeah I didn't this like was it unwa- This was unwatchable garbage. This was a garbage. slog of a show. Yeah. Yeah, and all it was, it literally was like 25 minutes of exposition any fucking way. This like unwatchable it was, it was a lot of exposition too i felt i felt like they were yeah. like just dumping a lot of like here's this world here's this crater here are these monsters here are our weapons David. here's David. all these characters with like random quirks rule number one don't die rule number two don't die rule number three don't die rule number four what's rule number four? What? rule number four what's uh, rule number four? Oh, i'll tell you if you survive save D- guess what don't die um <laughs> bitch i survived they were, they were all like variations of don't die that's like literally what all the 
I'll tell you if you survive. He really did say that shit. He really did say I'll, that shit. I'll tell you if you survive. It was like it was a lot of like fucking like cliche shit and I think this dog was written by a twelve year old. I think I think a twelve year old child was like, I wanna be a hero. Um, oh, oh, so okay, so I had some extra little fun facts. So this consists okay, so there's a manga called Deep and okay. Nirvana. Dumb. No one cares about that. There's a mobile and a PC game that release, I think, the same day as the anime. Bro, fuck and this so, show. So, yeah. If anyone cares, if anyone wants to play the expected. game, I don't know. You want to play the yeah. Deep Insanity game? Whatever. Okay. Uh, you be a hero? 2 1. Yay! Okay, moving on. You moving on. Miss, you did a miss. We dusted it. We took care of business. Oh like you we need dusted to that oh. one. Yeah. All right. Boom. See, that show, was, that show was tragic, and I, I hope nobody, I hope nobody listening watches it. In my no, opinion, worst of the fifteen, easily. Uh, okay, next one, Kenny. You ready? The what world's finest assassin gets reincarnated in another world as an aristocrat. This is uh, well. I hate to be that guy, but you pretty much just did the description. So That's I don't know. The <laughs> All right, thumbs, thumbs. <laughs> is like, um, Isekai's tell you the entire plot of that the was show. The, oh, was that the description or was that the title, David? What do you did you um, mess up? No. Uh, uh, yeah. the, the world's finest assassin gets reincarnated in another world as an aristocrat. Is about an assassin who gets reincarnated in another world as an aristocrat. Right. Fuck me in my ass. Mm. No. An <laughs> assassin aristocrat at that. You know. Sick. Mm. Well, that's the description. To, so, what do they say? He has to kill the hero. Yeah, yeah. The at the end of the first episode when he dies, the the goddess lady appears in front of him and is like, "I need you to do something for me." And she, and he's like, "Let me guess, kill someone." And she's like, <laughs> yeah. "Yeah, you got my ass, dog." He's <laughs> like, "Nobody asked for and, me um, unless they need someone dead." Yeah, he was yeah. like, "I know what you're." He's asking. a pretty cool character. I thought he was pretty cool. Like, cool. That is the one thing about okay, these guys suck balls, but. This is a nice twist on it by having a character that, in his first life, he was a badass. Not, you know, what I mean, That's in true. SAO, like Kirito was a piece of shit, and his first, you know, everybody's like a piece of shit in their first life, and in their second life they become a badass. Like, yeah. oh, this I'm guy, the fucking hero. This guy was already a badass, and he's getting right. brought to another world to do something in the in the second world as a badass. So there's something about that that's actually like moderately interesting to me it's as like, someone who's like, like these guys. Yeah. And that's we're kind of at that point in isekais where like they like you have to do something because <laughs> like if you don't you're just gonna get lost in the mush you yeah. know whatever um, in you... another world with my smartphone got two seasons I don't want to talk about that oh, wait that's, any... that's animated oh I gotta watch that show drugstore in another world dude I heard there's another drugstore in... I heard I think I this season you... had a second drugstore in another world that got adapted is that the other one that I read yeah. Bro, it might be because another one came out like a different show based on a different series that, well, also, the one that we saw was bad so no but I heard this one's just as bad that's what the other what... one's bad I don't, the, uh, the premise is uh, at the very but why of all the premises to get repeated twice in the isekai world why that one I don't I know just I don't don't... Know. People love convenience world with my, stores. With my, People, oh my god! With Whatever. My Android. Okay. Here's what I liked about a wrist or about this one. A, I liked that the entire first episode took place in his world he, yep. before he died. I thought it was a really cool flip. Except I didn't for expect the opening that. Interstitial, but yeah, I mean, except for the the last bit. But essentially, a majority of this episode was all in the character's initial life, in his first life. You know, <laughs> um, so that was an interesting flip for an isekai because I didn't know what to expect. Two. They had a lot of, like, actual, like, soft moments. I mean, yeah, there was, like, a weird... There was, like, some weird... What the fuck was that, like, beauty pageant thing that oh, he killed people? Yeah. You know, there was some weird, like, world-building things at the opening scene, and I was like... The, tra like, the, the transition <laughs> from Isekai world to reality, to, to his life before he died, was, like, kind of weird. I couldn't really... It took yes. me a while to pick up that it transitioned to yes, yeah, when he was exactly. Alive. Yeah, That was, like, my one there gripe. Was, there was like a weird mix there, but I liked the uh, the I liked the entirety of the scene where he's escaping with the girl or whatever. Um, yeah. I thought it was all really cool. She, they had really it was really what what I always look for with some of my shows is like, does the dialogue sound like things normal people would say to each other? Mm -hmm. And if so, is that still exciting or interesting dialogue? And so, with a lot of times with Isekai, the dialogue can be really fucking bad you know it just doesn't sound just like corny it sound, yeah it doesn't sound like what people would say it sounds corny it sounds goofy yeah um and so a lot of times that can kind of take me out of it you know it's like i don't want to watch a show where everyone's saying stuff that just doesn't make sense but in this show i felt like they handled the dialoguing 
uh, between those two characters quite well. Obviously, once the next episode starts, we're going to be in the other world 100% of the time. And I don't know what... Like, I don't know what that's going to look like, but it has certainly got me interested. And also, was this also pretty... Who animated this one? This one was uh, also... Sil- it felt Silver animated Link. well as well. This, this also looked good. Uh, by Silverlink, and I just like, opened their Wikipedia page. Um, so Silverlink, they did what uh, of relevance? Well, they, okay, they've done a lot. Um, yeah. And recently, <clears throat> Restaurant to Another World, I don't know if that what that looks like. Uh, it's a popular isekai, though. Mis- Misfit of Demon King Academy, Our Last Crusade, or The Rise of the New World. We saw that, and that was trash. Um, oh, they're oh, animating oh. Great Jahi. That's why it sounded familiar. Oh, they just okay. did Jahi? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. That one was okay, though. Wait, mm-hmm. when will a human make it? Okay, never mind. That's that's the, for another episode. An upcoming anime? Uh, yeah. Um, no, but I don't know, guys. What do you... I mean, like... I like this did one. It, did it do enough for you guys to get you interested? Because I know it, it surprisingly did more than I thought it would for me. This is the other isekai I was talking yeah. about earlier. I, I don't know. I, I thought this was very interesting. My fear is that once it goes to Isekai land, that it loses its <laughs> interest. That's I'm scared about that too, David. And kidding, have you read ahead on this one? Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing, guys. I know what's coming. Oh. And there's like it was like interesting and then like we got to this arc where I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like this is not the story I signed Damn up. it. Mm. Damn it. I love, I, that's I, love what, I love the what the fuck is happening arc that just like <laughs> when that happens you're like okay this is dead now you're like go back to go back to the other thing I was worried that the setup was gonna like the setup was too good to be true so it almost sounds like that might be the case but I don't know yeah. I still yeah. I love the first episode <laughs> maybe I'll just skip that arc and then I bet it'll like totally be meaningless like is it near the beginning yeah. of the show. Or like yeah, it's like, the, it's like the <clears throat> third arc, I th- or kind of the second <clears throat> arc. I don't know. It's pretty quick. <clears throat> nice. It was like right, boys. I think we got it. I mean, I think that for the most part, we all mod- pretty good. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Oh, so, nice. Nice. Third, the royal flush by the boys. Oh. We all put a sideways thumb on this one, so we all felt like this was a one that we might keep up with, might not. So, just in the middle. All right, who's next? Wait, right, can Jerry. you next? No, it's you, Jerry. Is it me? Or- Jerry, you're next. Uh, my oh, senpai fuck. is annoying. Oh. First episode of My Senpai Annoying is pretty straightforward. Two individuals who both work at the same company. One is very small, very short. Um, she's a young lady, but she is an adult, a full-grown adult. Um, but she's new to this company. And an older person who works at the company, who's a massively massive dude... Uh, have to work together. I, it, it's sort of implied that he sort of leads projects that she's in, essentially, mm-hmm. um, that she's involved in. And she obviously, or he obviously kind of picks on her a little bit. Um, there's just a little bit of like that Nagatoro-esque picking on, but in reverse, it's the boy kind of picking on the girl. Um, and through that, you kind of see some flirting, some character development, some stuff like that. So in this first episode, it's sort of about, it just kind of introduces our characters Sets the stage. We see them go to one, like, professional thing together. And there's kind of, like, a cutesy moment between the two of them. Um, and, you know, we don't know if the characters have really developed feelings for each other yet. But, obviously, that's it's it feels like it's set up for them to imminently have feelings for each other. I mean, whatever right. she said, but why couldn't I be your wife? I mean, yeah, yeah, I was in that yeah, same I scene. I was like, damn. Say, you know, yeah, like, I, I mean, why couldn't I be so your much? wife? Though? Cause what did he say to her? He was like, he was like, I see you as like a the perfect little sister, or like a like, uh, like a daughter. If I was married and had a kid, you'd be like the the kid I'd imagine or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, and then she was like, you're the child well, I wish. Why, he was like, why can't you look at me as the wife? I'd be the wife. Um, and it, was be the it was cute. Wife. Yeah. It was cute, but it was cute. Um, so I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, you can go, Kenny. It was it was well animated. I do want like a lot yeah, of shows this season just, were really well we're just animated. Gonna, we just get used to just saying that on each show. Well, yeah, yeah. There was a couple that they're just. This one was also really pretty for some reason. It was really well animated. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, the pacing was good, and it felt like it naturally introduced side characters that we yeah. aren't getting full. Like we aren't genuinely getting introduced to them, but they're uh, they're there. You saw, right? You saw him giving the side eye to that girl's rack, dude. He was like, he was I, like she that, got. <laughs> Yo, he that, he's that one. Always he was there. Like, he's always he's like ready for their episode already. Yeah, I was too. I was kind of like, okay, they're gonna be okay, fun. That's fun. What's going on? Mm-hmm. The, but yeah, the, I like I like that the natural introduction of side characters. Something that I really like. Yeah. 
The um, so the studio yeah. that does this for fun fact is Doga Kobo, Doga Kobo. Um, okay. they did they did um dumbbells. How oh. heavy are the dumbbells it looks you lift? Good. It looks and good. They did Ikabukuro Westgate Park, which I don't remember that anime looking really good. It was okay. Mm. I remember it looked, it looked, it looked, it looked okay. Yeah, like it looked okay. I don't remember it looking bad either though. But like, so I feel yeah, like yeah. this show, kind of like with Comey, like. I wouldn't expect a show like this to look so good. Yeah, it kind of looked for no really, reason. really good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like so. it's like the, the sweet animation that you get. With, like they're just riding the train and something. It's like wow, that's really animated. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, like, like, it's like everything is animated so well. It's like, what the is it fuck? looking so pretty? I don't yeah. know. Um, yeah, no, Kenny, I really agree with you though. The this this show. It delicately introduced all the characters, and I think that made me more interested. The show felt super good pace. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes with these slice of life shows, it can be like it can get a bit snooze festy at some points to me. But this felt pretty nice. There was always kind of a sta- something at stake with each little scene we got, so it kind of made me more invested. You know, like whether it was like, yep. is she going to do well at the presentation? What's going on? You know, there was always like a little bit of something to get invested in in each little scene. Um, and I expect it to be a little more vignette e from this point forward. Sh- a show like this is generally kind of set up that way. You know, mm. there's not going to be like an overarching plot. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you kind of have to get that that thing, but yeah, I mean, I liked it. Yeah, I I enjoyed it too. I I mean, you know me, slice of life are my my favorite one of my favorite genres. So just seeing people go to work to sell, I don't even know like what they're selling. They're like paper. Yeah, wait, what were, what were they selling? I they're, I don't they're actually in they're, data they're, uh, under sheets. They're, they're, they're salesmen. Oh, can you just describe what I do? Um, and then they present. <laughs> I, do, I just present data. <laughs> Uh, no, they, they like, they're just salesmen, but like, and I'm really, I like that this episode, the first episode, they didn't like really like introduce, introduce a lot of characters. They're just like, like, oh, there's this person, there's this person, there's this person. Soft and, yeah, right. clearly yeah, like, like a lot of soft intros. The big boss, the big boss, like clearly seems like he'll be a cool character and like we yeah. got a brief notice of him. Then yeah, the friend of what's his name, the other salesman. Clearly has something going Girl on. Girl that pulled out the vodka bottle and was like, yeah. "It's just water." Yeah, oh, uh, it was, was funny. Like, yes. Yeah, I'm, was, no, was I'm just she, saying. You can't remember name. Mm-mm. It's I was, just you put, water. You like it's water. water. <laughs> you put water, no vodka bottle, lady. Um, but so I feel uh, like that's what the alcoholics say. It's just water. It's okay? just water. Yeah, it's just a joke. But yeah. I don't know. Funny, boys. Yeah. There's not a lot more to say about this show. I think it's got a cutesy vibe. If you're looking for something that's wholesome. That's got a Very lot of wholesome. cool characters and it's really well animated. I think this is a show you might want to check out this season. That's the best yeah. way I can put it. You know, I want to make a but. premonition. I think in this show, there's going to put, be a point where Vodka Girl is drinking out of a water bottle and it, it will be fun. liquor. It'll be liquor. Yeah, yeah I, I think you're right, Kitty. I think you're right. I think, I think for sure that will happen. I think you're if right. It does get in the comments, everybody, please. Yeah, please. I'm gonna say if you've watched ahead or read the manga, tell us down below. Yeah, yeah. Tell me, tell me, because. Seems pretty clear to it's, me. It's, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna, the joke will be made this season. Chekhov's gun, you know. All right. Uh, okay. Thumb it. Thumb it, boys. Three, two, one. Where are we at? I'll watch this one. I watched I'm the first sighing. episode, and I went out and bought all of the available manga for this show. Yep. David, so what? I, I Yeah, I can. Yeah. Uh, I, I really, yeah. I really yeah. like this show. Some, so. I will keep him wanting, watch him do it. I want to go to yeah. Kunia. I want to, you know, I just want to go to that side of town, so. We can go to. We usually go on Wednesdays. Me and David have been going pretty much every Wednesday. I know where the fuck is tomorrow. But... Tomorrow, yeah, yeah. Zachary. Okay. 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 After okay, the see if I got some quarters. Okay. Uh, right. uh, okay. Okay. After the pod, boys, we might have to meet up. Because, um, God's not okay, dead, so, boys. God's not, God's God's not dead. dead. Okay. What's uh, my next one? No, I'm, I'm, next, I'm right? next. I'm next. David's next. Visual Wait, David prison. I did. I did this one. Can, oh, you get. You did this on purpose. No, no. no it was good. Back, back. No, Which one did I do last? You did. Oh, you um, did. Aristocrat. You're aristocrat. Right, you're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then. Okay, okay everybody, so, keep it straight. Get in the comments if we're going off. Okay? All right. Time the rotation is ironclad. Visual okay. I don't, can we just prison. skip this one? Actually, no. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. I want to. Visual talk about prison it. is. Please try to explain what the first episode of Visual Prison was. All right. So let me tell you. This is a very. <laughs> wait, what? Oh, wait, what was it? Um, okay, explain. No, wait, what in the song? Wait, what is it? Um, Guilty Cross? Guilty, Guilty Cross! Guilty Cross! Guilty. All right, so we did a show similar, t- kind of similar to this last fall episode where there was a show and it was kind of like a, um, like, a, like an animated um, singing competition show. show. 
I don't like, know. Like a, I, think it was, yeah. I think it was like two seasons ago or something that we did that. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was yeah. insane. I think it was last fall, maybe. Or maybe... Hyper rap battle or some Hyper yeah, Division rap Mike, battle, some shit. Hypnosis like Mike. But yeah, so this Hypnosis is, Mike, thank you, yes. This is a show that is basically a bunch of music videos glued together with yeah. with kind of a plot under under it all um our main character he's like a boy walking around has no personality and all of a sudden people around him are singing and he's like huh and then he gets turned into a vampire but he's not a real vampire he's he's a well what's the there's like a term for it he's half he's vampire half, half vampire? human uh, yeah. it's vampire is I think they, have, they have a word for it in the show yeah, yeah, yeah. but i well i think that that's just like the word for it, like Dungeons and Dragons. Like, no, I, oh, think, I, think they, they, okay. I think they use that term in this show too. Um, they and, did, yeah, they used a word. And he's got the yeah. the blood eye, blood moon eye, or something like that. He's oh, got. I don't know how you. Okay, <laughs> David has gotten way more exposition from this show than me. No, <laughs> yeah, he's, that, well, that did, that was one. There was a singular conversation in the back of the yeah. first episode where they were like, "You're a half man, half vampire. You're gonna have to compete in the vampire singing competition so that you can win the Blood Moon or some shit yeah. like that." Yeah. And you get like infinite power or whatever. Yeah, what, infinite is, power. what? What do you win? Something like infinite that. Power. Something like that. You're, some, you're the king of the vampires. <laughs> Because the first, like, 18 minutes of the show was just music videos. It was just music like, videos. It was and just the, music videos. I thought, I thought the songs were all bops. I, oh, like, I liked all the songs. Was a bop. It's like, okay, kind of like, um, clear. it's like, it's like J-pop, some J-pop and some J-rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, which I fuck with. They all sounded good to me. So, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I think... You might have to get your ears checked or like <laughs> improve your musical no, taste. Because I, I didn't, dis I didn't all dis good. I didn't dislike Guilty the Cross music. I didn't dislike Guilty the music. Guilty Cross. They sung that one twice though in this they episode. Did. They, they did. They did. I would not be surprised well, if we hear that one. one a couple Remember, times. the first one was the guy with his previous, mi and then the second time, the main character got to sing well, it. With right, him. right, 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 right. You right. know, it was it was the perfect duet. Oh, <laughs> I remember now. Like, so the character is like going to a concert. In the beginning, right, and then yeah, that's when they all, like yeah. the singers notice him, and they're like, "Oh, this boy." Okay, yeah, that's the first part. Yeah, because he doesn't like turn into like dust like all the other humans. Yeah. Yeah. there was no, there was no. You're you're creating plot out of thin air. I'm, I'm, I'm just pretty sure they plot. jumped out of a helicopter <laughs> yeah. and they had like a semi on Kenny's the ground. Right. Though. Kenny's right. Kenny's right. That did happen. And then Kenny's they right. all had swords for mm -hmm. microphones. This was also animated very poorly compared to some oh, of the other shows we watched. Yeah, guys. a little bit. It was su super stiff. It was super stiff. Which is funny because A1 Pictures yeah. did this. Yeah, A1's so a pretty... They're, they're hit or miss. They're hit or miss. Honestly, they're probably doing, like, other shows this season. And this is, like, they're, their, like... If, like, their A and their B team are on two other shows, this is probably, like, their C team. You know what I mean? Like, they're, like, their backup animators doing this yeah. or something. I mean, Kaguya-sama in 86, I thought, looked pretty good. So Yeah, those are both good shows. Good. But that's a, like I said, eighty six is actually kind of enjoyable now. This season is actually like the politics are interesting again, and I'm like, damn it! Damn, I need to catch up, Kenny. Damn it! But, but yeah, so that's that's all I have to say about uh, visual, visual prison, prison is a big fat thumbs down. That was a bad show. I won't watch any more of that. Oh, oh boys! Oh my god! <laughs> you get the comments. It's David fifteen for fifteen. Oh, please get on um, to him. <laughs> I don't. I think I've only down thumbs. He dumbed down deep insanity. He dumbed down deep insanity. Everything else is shit, like so. yes to maybe. So yes. David thumbs up. Uh, what was that show? What was that terrible show, Jerry? Which Crunchy one? Roll original. Arena. Oh, fucking X -Arm. X arm. Fucking X arm. <laughs> <laughs> what a I waste. Did. Of space. I, I hate that did. show. I want to go back and watch the whole thing. No, please. I will eventually. Like, the All fact 13. that the whole show got made, like without no one, uh, no one stopped it. Yeah. All right, Kenny, are you ready? Okay, I just yeah, want you to know. I just want you to know. I I made the order, and then that was it. I didn't plan anything. This is definitely Sakugan. It's Sakugan. <laughs> okay, so I know the plot to this show one hundred percent. So a young woman is rescued by an old ancient vampire. Her name is Yuki. With the principal of the Cross Academy as her daughter, and their friend Kiryu becomes a vampire. Uh tag vampire night uh, down in the comments down below. This is the Vampire That's Night Podcast, guys. Please. <laughs>
Tune in. I don't know what week. to say. I mean, he's not wrong. I mean, that's what Sasha Tag about. Tag the Night Podcast in the episode down about. below or in the comments down below. I do not oh know what the God. fuck Saku got. I think, like, they're, like, explorers or something. Yeah. They die in the mines, but, like, you need, like, a dad and a daughter team. Yeah. <laughs> no, not I mean, that's pretty much it. There's some no. robots or... She received. I genuinely watched four listen, episodes. Of this listen, show, she received. Didn't. She received a map in the mail, and now she has to go with her dad right. into the fucking mines yep. to yep. to fight the kaiju's. What the yep. fuck, yep. dog? Yep. That was what I I got too, but I you know. <laughs> they're in they're in an underground city because they got there oh, somehow. She was also, they're all underground. Just something like uh, like dreams that are like giving her visions of the like the little the nine year old was doing that. She, I think. she dreams about also. Yeah. Is, is she nine? But she graduated college. She graduated college, but she she's nine. College, but she's Please. nine. She's very smart. She's very smart. She's very smart. She's very smart. I don't. Uh, this anime was. Weird. I like could not tell if she was actually nine or if she was just tiny, but twenty two. No, or I mean something, the, the the dad said that she was supposed to be like nine. I think I want to say the 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 age got dropped in the first episode, but okay. yeah. I'd have to double check. She's nine, but she's incredibly <laughs> intelligent, is what I gathered. This is just yes, it can be weird, but I fucking loved this first episode. It I was fun. It. I loved it. I liked it. The animation was you great. I do want to be straight up. I loved the it. The animation was great. I think I really liked the opening song, if I remember correctly. I think the opening that, song was really good. I think the opening plays on the end. But. Oh, my God. Yeah. The I all the mu Actually, back it way up, this show had the best soundtrack of the season. Did oh, you, yeah. The, the underscore for the scenes was beautiful. Go back and re-listen to some of the musical score in the show. I was bl- I literally was like looking at Alyssa. I was like, "What is this?" I was like, "Where is this music coming from?" Um, but the music was phenomenal in this show, and the song was obviously really good. Uh, yeah. But here's what I loved about Sakugan. So this show is absurd, but at the core of it, there is a like a thematic through line, and that's yeah. this idea of this father daughter duo. Mm-hmm. And to me, that is going to be like the if someone wants to get in this show, that's going to be the crux. Like, that is the... We're in it for them, even though all this, like... There's literally giant robots and kaijus in this show. Like, I, and they live mm-hmm. in an underground society where they have to adventure out and collect, like, some sort of fucking stardust or some shit. I don't yeah. even know. But... Uh, the, Jerry, bro, the exposition I, that... felt like I didn't care at all when we got to that scene where the guy is in the bar and he's talking to the other guy about how he's going to take care of his daughter and how he's ever going to be able to, like, come to terms with, like, what it means to be a father. And the other guy's like, sometimes you just have to fucking suck it up and do it, dog. Yeah. Like, to me, that thematic through line carried me through this first episode. Make And, th- I mean, obviously, there was a very emotional... I don't even want to spoil it. I want people to watch the first episode and, like, get to the end of the first episode because the ending scene was super powerful for a first episode of a show. Um mm. At least for me. I don't know about you guys, but I felt like the... I think I fell asleep through it, Jerry. Yeah, and the extraneous <laughs> bullshit of this show, like, it's just... It's like a good theme, but, like, you can... <laughs> Not to just, like, this. completely shit on everything you just said, Jerry, <laughs> but... <laughs> You could just you. Here's the thing. You could have told this story, just not with all of. The, it, there's just so many wrinkles. Yeah, like, I'm just like stop asking questions. Like, there's why like is she in a... pre- premonition dreams? Why did she get that map in the mail? What the fuck even is this society? Okay, everything's underground. What's an excavator? Why did he used to be one? Why? There are so many goddamn questions from this first episode, and I was just yeah. Like, that that that's one thing I agree with Kenny. I think there were a lot of questions that, as I was watching, I noticed, but I did love. I felt like I did pick up on that, that there was like a lot more attention on the father daughter dynamic, especially when they introduced another father daughter dynamic of what yeah of, of what Mimint what Mimintpu wants to do because she wants to explore and seeing yeah. that I was wait, like wait. okay I'm I'm kind of I'm seeing the can we be honest the that's what I'm saying kind of, what the fuck kind of name <clears throat> oh there were Gagumba I honestly. I was like trying to ask this. I was like, "These are made up. Like, where are these names coming from?" I was like, <laughs> well, "Mimi Poo is coming." Mimi Poo. I don't know. I I think that despite the absurdity of it, these are the types of shows that I like when things are like absurd surrealism, mm. but like grounded in some sort of like human theme. Right. If they do it well, it'll be really good. If yeah. they fuck it up even slightly, this is gonna be absolute tr- dog trash by the end. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, as soon as the as soon as the, <laughs> the plot and characters are moving only based on where the fucking stardust is, that's whenever it's you know. Right. That's I need it to just always be grounded in 
the humanity of it. And then the show can maintain something and tell a story that's going to be really fun amidst all this craziness. I mean, look at a show like Gurren Lagann. It, that's the that's the obvious comparison here for this show. Yeah. Um, the reason why Gurren Lagann works is that despite the sci-fi, underground, mechs and shit, it's clearly about something more than that. Gurren Lagann's yeah. not about all that shit. It's about the characters. It's about Simon. It's about his journey. It's about who he becomes, the person he becomes, the man he becomes, the experiences he had that make him that. If this show can do something like that, this could end with up being mentor? like... This, with them, with You got with it, mentor? kid. Yep. If it's, if the show could do something like that, this could end up being one of the like hidden gems of the season. Yeah, if I think it so if it doesn't, it's gonna end up like uh, what was that show we watched that started off really strong and they got really shitty? It was about all those guys that were like prisoners. Tower of God. Tower of God. No, no, no. They're they're all like they all have like bounties on their heads. Oh, uh, I know, I know, I know. A uh, vampire. <laughs> Shut up. We watched. Wait, wait, wait. no, no, no. It was so forgettable, Jerry. Jerry, I guess. Fushiki Yuki, Fushiki Yuki. We all watched it all the way through. No, I know. It was a uh, uh, about the bad guys. Don't buy the Don Don Rampa people. The um, girl that gets sucked in and like ends yeah, up. Yeah, they called them. It's oh, the name um, of the outlaws. It's the name of the outlaws. Whatever yeah, they're called. Yeah, it is. Whatever. It is the name of the outlaws. That's exactly what the show is uh, called. But I can't think of it. Um, I don't know. What I else? actually kind of enjoyed that. Is there about Wonder Show. Sure. No, no. Name it. It was the one. It was like a you know. My brain needs to search it. Wait, we yeah, can't move on until it. we get this name. Brawler, brawler. Brawler was one oh, of them. Oh, one oh, of them. Um, um. <laughs> David thinks he's I know it. 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 Um, My brain thinks it starts with an A, but I'm not. I'm not like remembering. Akudama Drive. Akudama Drive. Akudama Drive. It does start with an A. Okay. Akudama. Good. Akudama. Akudama Thank you, David. Drive. Thank you. Yep. Okay, we can move on. This show could go that way, you know, where Akudama yeah. Drive had a really great initial start, Set up, but yeah. by the end, the characters were just doing things to do things, and a lot of stuff just sort of fell. Mm. Um, Sakugan, because Sakugan's also an original anime, just like Akudama was. So, um, it's off of a, like a, it's like an adaptation of like a novel. Oh, it's a novel? Oh, I didn't know there was a novel involved. Never mind, I thought this was an original. No, oh. no, it's, yeah, it's just, it's a, an adaptation of the novel Sakugan Labyrinth Marker. Oh, cool. Okay, well, that makes it e okay. Now, then, it might even, it might actually be, it might even be weirder. Yeah, it might, it might have an action with a source. You know, there might be some real serious stuff in there. Who knows? Yeah, I'm into it. I'm into it though. So, boys, three, two, one. <laughs> I don't ever thumb anything up. I don't know if Alyssa and I are gonna for sure watch it, but I want to try. Yeah, I want to try. So, I'm giving it a side thumb. Okay. You boys both went for it. I mean, Kitty, you've already watched most of it, so... I watched, like, four episodes, yeah. yeah. It was accidental. I, like, fell asleep, and then I was, like, on episode three, and I was like, well, I'll just go back, and then... Jeez. Yeah. Pull the David. Pull the David. All right, David, what's next? All right, next one is Miruko-chan. Oh, it's me. It's me. Um, Okay, uh, Miruko-chan. This show is about a young lady who, for the most part, seems pretty normal, Um, but... She can see horrendously disgusting ghouls and ghosts, and they all are trying to see if she, they can see if she can see them. And instead of acknowledging them, she tries her absolute hardest to not look at them and acknowledge them. And it is essentially a horror comedy, is the way that I would describe it. Mm -hmm. uh, the first episode mainly just sets up the concept. It actually starts off without introducing the concept at all. It goes in really easy. It's like, oh, here's these girls. They're friends. Oh, I can recognize you by the feeling of your boobs on my back. Um, but then it, like, slowly introduces the concept because she's, like, having a conversation on her phone. And then all of a sudden, big, fat, nasty ghost in front of her thing. And she's, like, you know, has to not react to it. Uh, then the rest of the episode is just her not reacting to multiple other ghostly situations, essentially. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, on top of being a horror comedy, it's also kind of like an etchy horror comedy for some reason. Because yeah. we got a lot of... Yeah, like panty shots. Of, uh, butts and thighs, baby. <laughs> Whoever was animating this show is really into butts and thighs. I was like, well, wait, I was not good. expecting this. <laughs> I almost think that this show had goddamn no plot. Like, just Yo, straight up. Like, oh, there wasn't no. in the first episode for sure. Yeah, and, no. okay, this is what pissed me off. There was no fucking sound. For large stretches of this fucking show, I actually don't remember. And it, uh, it was like it was aggravating like, me. It was just like she would just be like quietly walking down the hallway, and I'm like, so nothing is occurring with no sound at all, and like I thought the sound design worked. Like she wasn't doing. I, I get what you're saying though, Ken. Yeah, I, I noticed like, it too. 
Yeah, yeah. It was like empty. There were so many. Yeah. And then they still would use me. Like, if that was the aesthetic, like the aesthetic was to leave the sound empty so that it's even creepier whenever you see the ghosts. That's what it is. They, they just was. been played creepy ghost music. I think they were going for a sort of a, like a, you know, I, I think like I saw. Like a thriller type of like dynamic. They wanted us to juxtapose, like, the comedy and the horror together. This is a really weird show because, like, what's another horror comedy that you... Like, Scream? you know, Zombie, Zombieland and oh, yeah, yeah. Shot yeah. of the Dead. These are horror comedies that I can think of off the top of my head. It's trying to do that same sort of thing, but it wants to be, like, disgustingly horrific. Like, the monsters intentionally are nasty, nasty. You know what I mean? But, and I don't know if that's going to work after episode one like you know what i like yeah. i don't know how to put it like it, it might get old how, soon how many times can we g get like reaction shots of miracle like you know not uh, reacting She's to like, no, oh, there's something like, eye. Eye. she doesn't react yeah well she re well she reacts but it's like oh it's kind of funny how because the way she, so she doesn't acknowledge him but she reacts with like oh Oh my! Oh my shoulder! Like oh, that's so weird! Like oh, there's something in my eye! Like and she just like, I'll just do this for hours until this ghost disappears, which is yeah. like kind of funny. But at the same time, like doing that same thing over and over again, no matter what different things, because she could do different like actions. But yeah, I feel like even like three episodes in, I'm like, okay, this is old. This is like I don't want to watch this anymore. Also, why was it so aggressively horny? Like, why was the show so aggressively horny? Like, it was. Bro, <laughs> Am I supposed to be I was scared? So... <laughs> Am I supposed to be turned on? What? Like, yeah. to be... I was like, Am I don't I know how to, to laugh. laugh? Yeah, like, there's a lot of different was... things. Out. I'm about yeah. to say this was a show that I just like. I don't think it was poorly made. I just do not like it. No, yeah, it it didn't. It actually looked pretty cool to me. Like the visuals yeah. of the show yeah. actually looked yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. The animation um, was. Nice. Yeah. I guess, yeah. Who is our who is our animation uh, team on this Passion. one? Passion. I think they're known high school for... DXD, baby. Yeah. Yeah. And inner well, species that's reviewers. What... Now we know why this show is so fucking horny. Now we know why this show is so fucking horny. The animators are literally just horny. God yeah. damn it. I've had the manga. I think I have I think there's only three volumes in the US right now. Um yeah. I've had it ever since it started coming out. And I haven't read oh, yeah. them. So oh damn! Now yeah. I want to read them just to see if they're actually like horny in the manga. Yeah, I would say you gotta let us know. Like in the manga, is it just as like like strangely etchy on the side? Because yeah. it felt like something that the animators were pushing that like maybe wasn't Which is original. Such a weird thing to add because I feel like horror and comedy are such like opposed type right. of genres. Adding in like a horniness to it, there's just like a trifecta, <laughs> yeah, it, a it trifecta of gross. feelings there. Yeah. Yeah, but honestly, even though Kitty didn't like it, I actually kind of liked the first episode. I just, I just straight up didn't like it. I was just like, this is kind of boring. And like, I, I like yeah. kind of liked. <laughs> I think, I think I set myself up for failure because I had, I, I had high expectations for some reason. I felt oh. like I thought going in that this was going to be like, a, like a top show of the season, oh. and it wasn't top for me. It definitely had it high. It, it had it a high. really audiences. Yeah, uh, people were looking forward like to the, it. I think the community really hyped it up. But yeah, I mean, it was just it was fine. But I actually enjoyed it. But it was fine. Yeah, something like, about some of the idea of being just like rock hard while I'm like watching this girl get like uh, aggressively. You know what I mean? Just like you're just scared. So much going, you're laughing. You're weird. Yeah, fuck. it was just like guess I'm gonna mess with my eye while this creepy ghost is here. And I was like, <laughs> so you've always <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, what about the music? There was a uh, not there the was no music, bro. The, the opening, the, the opening song. song. I think the opening song. song that's at the end. Sorry, that's. That's what um, I meant. They did definitely. I, I like, liked. It, I liked though. the opening song. Yeah, yes. I liked it. I remember All thinking, right. like, "Ooh, I like this." Okay, boys. Three, two, one. Fuck this show. Oh, Kenny said nope. Wow, Kenny, I expected something from that. Okay, Ken David and I are both. What do you mean? I, probably... I was pretty pretty open about how I felt about Miracle. No, Coach I know, but I don't know, man. I, I didn't see that one coming, but I thought I liked it more than I expected to. So, yeah. All right, David. All right, what's next, next show. You're I, next. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce this. Tact Op Destiny. Is it Tact OP? Tact Op? I think Whatever. the name of the character is Tact, right? Yes. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And, and I the, think the, the other character's name is Destiny. So. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, boys. Um, okay, this so was what I like. David, I, tell us the story of this one, or the plot. So, a little behind the scenes. So, this is the, the concept of this is similar to uh, Deep Insanity, that it's like a mixed media project. Um, made by uh, Bandai Namco. 
And it's yeah. kind of paired with a uh, a mobile game. So there's that kind of correlation. Um, and this right. is our first, um, or another series made by MAPPA this season. and Or sorry, not MAPPA, Madhouse. Um, but, but also worked on by MAPPA. So it's like a yeah. partnership. Um, so, so this is set in a world where music is uh, forbidden. It's in the, it's in the future, and, and it's in America. It's in America, yeah. and America, and America. Uh, music is forbidden because music attracts these monsters that come and basically fuck shit up. And the monsters yeah. were produced by a strange black meteorite, um, and. Uh, these monsters, they hear music, they hate it, and they go to the source, and they, like, will just fuck shit up. They'll kill people, they'll destroy everything in their path. And the way that these monsters are fought are they're fought by these conductors and magic arts. So magic arts are these girls that are kind of... Um, what They're, like, kind of created from, like, music sheets, like, magical music yeah. sheets. They're and almost... Yeah. It's kind of like... Kind of like Pokemon, Pokemon trainers and Pokemon. These magic arts are Pokemon, and the conductors are the Pokemon trainers. And so we, our main, our two main characters, Tact and Destiny. Um, Tact is the conductor, and Destiny is the magic art. We kind of see. I like the the beginning scene where there's like a random piano sitting there. A boy walks up and he's like, "Oh, what the fuck is this?" And it's like it's piano. And like Tact sits down, he starts playing, draws monsters in. And I don't really get still like the tech like sacrifices his arm for a second. I think, so, I think like, he she uses a portion of his life force. Yes, to, to spawn her powers. Right. Yeah. So uh, so all yeah. of that we kind of learn all of that in the first episode, and we see some fights. Animation pretty good. I mean, it's Mappa and Madhouse. So no, this was an awesome animated show. Yeah, yeah the animation was really really well done, and. With a show using music as its primary kind of like theme, I don't really remember any of the music. The music wasn't really like that memorable to me. So well, I mean, I it was it was just like piano music. It wasn't like yeah. I think they even used a couple like actual classical yeah. songs, if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure that's what, yeah. uh, that would make sense. Some of it was actual classical music, I think. Okay. Yeah. But fuck classical music. I'm not a fan of classical music. Yeah. Let, Let me, me be play old. the K-pop on the piano. But wait, where's the K-pop? Where's the BTS? So. I'm uh, I'm ready so. to get the shit storm on this one from the commenters and the potential fans because No, Jerry. Jerry? I think, Jerry? I think this is one of my least favorite things I watched this show, guys. I really hated this show. I did um, I did have to rewatch it twice cuz I fell asleep multiple times. I, I one of the biggest like offenses that I have had. Well, you know, in doing all these now that we've done this for like holy shit, we've like done this for like 60 plus shows at this point. Where we right. just watched the first episode and kind of one of the biggest things that's a turnoff for me when I watch these these shows and I just get one episode is when a series just dumps massive amounts of exposition into their opening episode to the yep. point where the viewer, especially when you're going in raw, like this show has no source material. When you're going in raw into a show, you have to be able to layer and pace your exposition in a way that works. And you can put exposition in your... Your opening episode needs exposition, or else it's going to be lame. You're not going to know what you're getting into. But there's a way to do it in a layered way that's not... Uh, when I use the word exposition dump, it's when they just layer on massive conversations that are just attempts to explain the world away. You know, like, we're just going to talk about this and talk more about it and talk more about it. And this show specifically... I mean, you guys just heard David trying to give the synopsis the amount of like words and things that they made up for the it's show all the first 24 that, minutes that they needed to explain in the first 24 minutes i was like it's overwhelming amounts of exposition because it was juxtaposed with these beautiful fight scenes that were yep. with these beautiful mu- uh, and for me it was like anytime the characters were talking i was like this is so fucking lame anytime they were fighting i was like yeah I was like, ah! It fucks too because it feels <laughs> like they could have taken the one, the big front end exposition dump, the like, the storybook. Yeah, the we got the whole. Oh, you could have taken yeah. that completely out. Just had the opening scene where the lady talks about, "I really wish you guys could hear music." Yeah. Sees yeah. the boy find the piano, and then the creatures start attacking. You're like, "What the fuck is going on?" Yes, those. Think, there's there's ways you can layer it. That's what I'm saying. Just explained like, it by showing, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think they, and I think they kind of did explain it by showing. Where then the townspeople all started freaking out. Like, mm-hmm. you know, 
but that's they also did the weird fucking giant expedition dump. You know? Your pace gets really jumbled when you're having these these expo dumps followed by okay we're going to tell you and show you we don't need all that we you need to show you need to let the viewer experience this the scenario as actually a show that we're going to get to that i i think was beautifully beautifully managed a what needed to be some exposition while also doing some uh some of that showing and i i will we'll get to it in a bit because it was it also it's one of my favorite shows that we watched and it's later mm-hmm. whatever so for me I know this show's going to be popular. It's Madhouse and Mappa. This show's going to yeah. be popular. Fights are going to be awesome. That's there's cool it. fights. And I know people will watch it and they won't give a fuck about the fact that the story is probably going to be some jumbled mess. It seems like a jumbled mess already. This story is going to be an absolute mess. I mean, it just feels like it. Like, there's so many characters already. There's so much world happening. They're, like, traveling across America. They're, you know, uh, the story's going to be a mess. But people are going to like it for the animation and the artwork being as beautiful mm-hmm. as it is. For me, it's just not the type of show that gets me excited. And uh, I don't know. That's just where I'm at with it. Yeah. yeah. I liked Echo. it. And I, I'm I'm lame. Like, I like the, the I liked that each of the characters were very distinct, right? She was like, I'm hungry. And he's like, I like music. And, like, they, you know, were to a T, that shit. Like, yeah. I like whenever characters are distinct and they, I don't know. And so I enjoyed it, and I like the fucking fight was cool. I yeah, I'm a Mappa fanboy, I mean, so anything with Mappa no, on I, it, I watch. So there's no way around it. This show was beautifully animated. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> awesome. I like you can hate this show as much as you want, but it was just gorgeous. Yeah. And the yeah, music. I'm ready for the. Wait, second. I'm ready for the tact op fighting game, I'd, where you control your I'd music play cards. It. I'd play it. Mobile game. I'd play it. No, I'm really it's something. But... Arc system works. Please. Okay, boys. Are you ready to thumb? Three, two, one. Jeez. I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass, pass on. Sure. I'm gonna pass on this one. I'm gonna I know, pass I on this one. Well, will you pass on this one though, Jerry? I don't know. What's the Kidding? next one? Yeah. Next one. Is it me oh, next? Wait. Um, yes. Your next skin. Yep. Ranking of kings. Oh, this is one oh, I really my. liked. I love this. Even show. Even though I do think that this 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 show did it, it committed the the crime of. Exposition dumping right at the beginning. It explains what a ranking of kings is. Ab- apparently, all kings are ranked it, on a scale. Right, but it wasn't. Right, it wasn't too get, much though. Well, you tell. Go, go yeah, on, yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Tell us what the episode was about, though. So, but the current king of the kingdom that we're introduced to, called I don't remember the name of the kingdom. I don't either. Is like ranked number four or seven or something. Yeah, he was like a very high rank, and so his son, his firstborn son. Boji, uh, Boji, Boji, Boji. I think it was Boji. Boji, Boji, Boji is what I think it was. Um, yeah. wants to be as great a king as his father, but he is deaf, and also that makes he's not mute, but he's he's incapable of communicating. Yeah, he isn't yeah. Um, well, he's not incapable. We see that he knows sign language. Yeah. Right, right. As in, like, he... So... Most people are incapable of communicating with him. Right, he can't speak well. Correct. Um, and so, he always strives to be a good... He wants to be a good king whenever he takes over for his father. Um, and in this first episode, he gets to meet somebody of the Shadow Clan, which are these little creatures, these little guys that are basically little shadows that can roll around. Um, and for the first time, this guy can understand what... Boji says. And so it's like this big connection and he's so happy and so even though this guy is like literally mugging him. Literally. He's like he's like, I love you, brother. Like, you know, I'll I'll be back. I'll be back with more stuff for you he's to like, mug me. Here's my clothes. Uh, <laughs> Come mug me again. Yeah. You're like, okay. Um, but it's just because yeah, he's got a strong heart and he wants to be yeah. Yes. So at the end of the episode he he gets into like a, a battle with his his younger brother oh. um who Sort of the antagonist of the show, yeah. Um, both the queen, the current queen, and his his younger brother, the second prince, or right. But uh, does the episode end before they actually start fighting? No, no they, they fought no. From, we, they see fought. we see it. We see it. Okay, so then you've turns out Boji actually is real quick on his feet. He's just not super strong, right? But he can pretty much dodge pretty actively. Like he's he's not a great swordsman, but he sort of can get around, and he sort of. 
is beating up his little brother. So. I mean, he whacked yeah, dude on the head. He fucked him up. Yeah, say he, he pretty much, he yeah, him. I'd say he gets him, yeah. yeah. Knocked his ass. Not really killed him, but yeah, yeah. No. But yeah, they're in like a little practice match, but mm. yeah. Immediately to me, guys, what like, I immediately got like, um, Miyazaki uh, vibes. Like, yeah, yeah. The, the, song, the music in this was the, the most song memorable to me. Like, yes. made me rock hard, like straight up. A- like, yeah. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yeah. Rock I hard. The music. Yep. I think the only show that I maybe liked the music more on was Sakugan, but this yeah. was one, like, easily a second to me. Like, one of the other ones I loved the music for. Um, I love Kage's yeah. design. Like, yeah. they're just so, I don't know, they're just so unique. Like, yeah. Like, I don't know, like, what, like, yeah, he's just a little yeah. shadow. Like, he's I don't just know. a little shadow guy. I love Kage. This show does what, uh, you know, I think that a lot of times, I'm trying to think of like a good example, but oftentimes a lot of people try to tell stories that are a little bit more mature by using, but use a little bit more of a childish appeal to it, right? Like, kind of uses a little more cartoony look. But there is still a mature theming like at play with this series, and I do know that this show, like the manga, or I think the original series was made for children, or it was made, it was intended for a younger audience. So this is not going to be like, I don't expect there Actually, to be it's like a seinen. It's a seinen series. It's I thought a seinen was, series. What did it? What did it run it? Tell me the uh, word man- manga hack. It was originally uh, an online manga via. It has been serialized online via Echo's user-submitted manga hack website since May 2017. But it's categorized. They're categorized, categorized as, as a seinen. seinen. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I thought that this was one that had more of a like a childish. I, I'm th- no. Childish I'm thinking of it. I must be thinking of something else that I must have read yeah. about recently. But so this one is actually geared. To, so beside the point, it goes back to my original point. It's using a kiddish look to oh, deliver yeah. a mature story. Yeah. That's what's happening here. Is we're getting a very a very cartoony, a very ca- childish appearance. But to deliver essentially almost like a, I mean, there's some Game of Thrones esque epicness to this Somewhat, world yeah, yeah. that we've been introduced to. Um, but instead, instead of getting to experience it through the eyes of the adults, we're getting to experience it through a young kid who's uh, obviously coming at the world from a different perspective than even we would, right? I mean, because he's deaf, and I think that 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 alone was enough for us to immediately, like as viewers, feel something for this character. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, guys, like. I didn't expect it to hit so hard when he like got to the room, and he just like started crying when he was alone. For the, the first time you see this happy, he's happy, he's chipper, he's giving his clothes to the the shadow kid, you know all this stuff. I was sitting in his room, and he just starts bawling his eyes out, and I was like, "Fuck!" That was, I was that like, was "Heavy, yeah." Like that's heavy, dog. Yeah. <laughs> this also, like, oh my god, I think it, I think it shows how kingly he can be. You know, yes, he, he yes. genuinely was able to hold it together. You know, and. I I'm yeah. ready to see Moji be the king, brother. I, mean, I don't know. And he clearly he's clearly actually got as much as he can't communicate well. Um, we immediately see he's actually got some fucking skills, dog. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, he, he understands won. really well. He's yeah, he gets it, and he he can he can fucking hold his own in a fight. Right. So that's right, I mean, he's not incapable because he's yeah. Dead. So I think that's going to be really dope to see the way that this goes, and I think that kind of using this. You know, not bad, but kind of misunderstood Shadow. What's the Shadow guy's name? I'm Kage. forgetting his name. Kage. Kage. You know, using him as sort of like a narrative device to help kind of push Boji, Boji's story. I'm liking that. I think that he kind of allows that outside of perspective. He's kind of our our perspective for the viewer to kind of go through Kage and, and get that. Um, it, but Kage was also, I mean, it looks like he, didn't he get attacked by like one of the other yeah, guards like, or whatever? Yeah, yeah, one of the four, the yeah. snake yeah. guy. This shit was kind of cool. Um, and yeah, the, the, the animation. Four? Yeah. Was gorgeous, guys. What the Looks fuck? Great. I mean, Looks so great. Oh Wits, my Wits god! Studio again. Oh, I see. Wits. I see. Oh, Wit studio. studio. I watch. Oh, my I don't Wits ask studio. questions. Oh. If I see Mappa Wit Studio, I watch. Oh. Okay, I watch. Wit, Wit Studio's the best. Wit, Wit, studio. Wit studio. I can't wait for the next season of Finland Saga for real. She- oh, I love Wit Studio. Yeah. I love Wit Studio. Okay. Boys, let's give our thumbs. I think this is my first thumb up of the night. Full yeah, thumb yeah. up. I, I want to definitely see watch it ranking. I gotta watch more of this show. Wait, did you did you also show. thumbs up Visual Prison? Uh, yeah, I think you did. Let's roll the let's roll the tape back. Um, roll it back. Roll it back. I think no, 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 actually, no, crazy David, you must oh. had your screen. Your screen must have been flipped because I actually gave it a fucking. Oh down. yeah. Oh wait, let me let me. Let's, 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 <laughs> yeah, you was what's going on there. Um, all right, yeah. all right. Next, next. Watch uh, more Okay, so we got last.
four. We've done eleven. Holy fuck! This is no, number eight? twelve. Are we already through eleven of these We've things? Done eleven of these. Yeah, things, but right? I feel like the last few. Holy are like, shit! The last few we're, like we have a lot to talk about with these. Okay, yeah. so this one is oh my god, Platinum End. Okay, so, so Platinum End. A little bit of you know build up for this. So this is a the newest story created by uh, Sugumi Oba and Takeshi Obata. Wait, whose turn is it? My turn. David's. Is it? My, wait. I feel like he's been getting off the rotation no, this whole no, time. Let's, no, let's readjust. Wait, wait, wait. Didn't Kenny do anything? Oh, wait, wait, uh, I did. Uh, I'm next. It's my turn. Uh, this is such an easy <laughs> way. I wanted to wait. Okay, 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 okay. Go, Jerry. Go, Jerry. Go. <laughs> just put little, put little tally marks for Jerry, Kenny, David. Okay, write down Jerry, Kenny, David. Put little tally marks. I was doing so good. I was doing so okay, good. So, Ring of Kings, Kenny did, right? Go, Jerry. Just go. Jerry. Platinum End is next. We'll do plat- Platinum End is next, right, David? Okay. Just go, Jerry. I got it. I got it. I got it. Jerry's all, Platinum in. Platinum End's pretty straightforward. Platinum End's pretty straightforward. Okay. Tell me how straightforward it is. Let me guess. Angels come down from heaven? That's how straightforward it is? Angels, angels exist in the other world, and God has decided he wants to pass that on to a, a current human. So they decided that humans that are in the process of committing suicide can be selected as potential God candidates. Mirai Kakahashi is a young man that has lived a pretty shitty life, decides he wants to kill himself, and jumps off of a building. Suddenly, as he's falling from the building, he's saved by an angel named Nasa. She saves his life and gives him a second chance and tells him he's been selected to be a potential God candidate and potentially take on the role of God. He's obviously taken aback, and the first episode mainly works to explain what each of the God candidates have as powers and kind of gives you a brief introduction to one of the other God candidates at the very end. Um, but mainly we kind of just better understand what the red arrows, white arrows, and the wings do, which is the main fighting mechanism for this death battle, which is what's going to come to come you know all the god candidates are going to have to sling it out a little bit to uh see who's going to become the next god um that is the setup so and all, and remember all the god candidates have been selected from people who are on uh the verge of death so that's your setup for platinum in and you mainly just get a little bit of kakahashi's character you do get a brief introduction of his family um sort of how he ended up in his family situation and some crazy shit happens with his family uh, at the back yeah. end of the first episode. Yeah. Um, but yes, in uh, yeah, some context, like David was saying, this is by Sugumi Oba and Takeshi Obata, the original creators of Death Note and Bakuman, two very popular weekly Shonen Jump series. This series ran in monthly Shonen Jump, though. Uh, yeah, month I, or it might have run in Seinen, a Seinen magazine. Jump I can't remember. Jump Squared, yeah. So, it, okay. So it was, okay, so monthly Shonen Jump. Yeah. Um, but beside the point, a little bit more adult context for uh, mm. for that as well. So, mm. uh, yeah. So this is their newest series. The manga just completed uh, early this year, I think. Early, yeah, yep. yeah. Early January. 2021 is when the ending of the manga came out, um, and now the anime has started, and it's going to cover the entirety of the manga's run because it ran for only about 14 volumes. So, boys, what did you guys think? It looked um, it looked like poop. This show looked like ah, shit, and ah, I don't know why. Like, ah. were they just they were too busy making the Vampire Diaries? <laughs> Who is the animation studio? Who is the animation I don't studio? Uh, Signal MD. So, uh, uh, what have they? I just done? don't know why. Like, this manga looks good. Like, that's, oh, that's the, the issue, right? Let me ref- let me put you okay, guys. Wait, you want to know what they did, Jerry? You want to know what else uh, Signal MD yeah, did? Yeah, what they do? Oh, your favorite show, Jerry? X Arm. Dragon goes house hunting. <laughs> oh fuck! That show didn't even look that bad though. It, that it, show, well, it, it kind of looked. It looked okay. They did Mars Red it's, too, which I think also looked, looked pretty not bad. Yeah, I don't remember that looking that bad either. I think it's because they can't. I mean, it probably looks good for regular manga, but with an artist like Oba, uh, right? He's just so good. It's yeah, so like he's so he, talented that you need just, to have you, you need a better animation. You, yeah, yeah. you need good animation. Yeah. I think that there were sparkles in this first episode of slight... It was like sometimes whoever the key animator was would do a pretty good job, and you'd see some sparkles of that um, in some of the scenes. But I did... I actually kind of liked the usage of 3D with, like, the uh, mm. the arrows the on their arrows. hands. I thought that... I kind of was like... When I was reading the manga, I kind of expected it to be like that in the anime, so it was cool to see that. Um, but... Uh, there was a lot of stiff animation. Just I mean, so much. Just yeah. Not enough. Like it, it would. It, we just couldn't get the full motion or, or kinda, some of that. Kind of took you out of it. Um, whenever that yeah. happened. And for me, I'm an animation buff, so I I do be looking at that stuff kind of hard. 
Um, it's hard to overlook in this show to some degree. Some people will pro- I mean, listen, people love Tokyo Avengers. And I said that show looked like ass cheeks from episode one. <laughs> that, show, that show looked like But trash. Jerry, what about, what about the shit on Takamichi's head? <laughs> Fucking oh, kill fuck. me, dog. I hated that I, shit. I think I think this is going to be a show. Listen, people that... love Tokyo Avengers because the story was good, even if the animation was bad. I think Platinum yeah. has a strong enough story that it can carry the show to an extent. Mm. But I do think that, unfortunately, it doesn't live up to Death Note. It doesn't live up to Bakuman. A lot of people consider this their weakest work. Better than most Death Game mangas and animes, in my opinion. Mm. But definitely the weakest compared to their two previous works. So, if the animation doesn't get better it might actually have a hard time kind of holding itself up yeah. this season, especially just because there's two shows we're going to talk about after this that are going to dominate the Shonen conversation, to be honest. Yeah. Um, there are two other Shonen that aired this season that look beautiful, and we're going to talk about those, and they are strong storylines. Yep. Um, so, I don't know. That's my that's my entire thought. I've read this whole manga, though, so I know I know the entirety of the story to come. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm trying to. I won't spoil anymore. I think I think this show might be an example of, you know, when people ask you, "Oh, do, should I read it or watch it?" You're gonna say you should read it. Yeah. I think if it's if the rest of the season is anything like the first episode in terms of like animation and look, uh, I I think because just after I watched the first episode and I flipped through the first volume of Platinum Man, and the art. Oh my god! I didn't expect the art to be as good as it was because I I haven't read any of. Yeah, the I was manga. saying he's a good art. He's so great. Right. Yeah, that's I mean, great. Yeah, and so yeah, I mean, I think I'm gonna keep watching. I think I'm gonna experience this. I don't know. I I'm having a tough time deciding if I want to just read it or if I want to watch the anime. But I might just read it. <laughs> so. I'll say the pacing felt good in this first episode and. They got to keep that up because the show is 24 episodes for 14 volumes, which means about half a volume per episode, which yeah. is a good amount of time to cover. I think yep. that's a good pace to set. Um, so it is confirmed tell- 24 episodes? Yeah, it's 24, I believe. Okay. Yeah, I think it's 24. 24 or 26. I can't remember. Um, but it's that's actually a good pace. The pace will be good. The music and the voice acting seemed really good. Yeah. I thought they, all that was pretty good. The biggest thing is just going to be if the animation can keep itself together. Hopefully during some of the fight scenes and some of the high points, the animation will get better. Unlike Tokyo Avengers, where during the bloody Halloween, it turned into a, a slideshow. You know what yeah. I mean? Like My hope is that with Platinum Man, maybe they put a little bit more effort into the big scenes. And mm. that's why we're getting some weaker animation in some of the less scenes. You know what I mean? That's my hope. You know, Fingers crossed. This is only a 24 episode series. It'll adapt the whole thing, so you might as well go all out on it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I hope so. I don't know. It I just looks so. so bad. I was just so upset because it- I have a couple scenes in my yeah. mind that I like really want them to do well. So yeah, yeah. what are we saying? Get go. It just sure. looks so bad. Like I don't know. Uh, it's be- It looks better than Tokyo Avengers. It I'm gonna does. be honest. It does. Like, no, no, that's. Please. I agree with that. <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah. Okay, thank but, like, you. For for a great anime, it looks bad. Yeah, like it, I, mean, I don't think it could be in a great anime conversation. Death Note was done by Madhouse, really? which is like, you know, they're like one of the legendary anime studios. So like that's why yeah. Death Note is considered so iconic even to this day. It's just such a beautifully done show. And they took a lot of stylistic choices with Death Note because in yeah. the manga, obviously, like there's just a lot of words, and so yeah. they took a lot of really cool stylistic choices with the anime. Yeah, it's what makes the anime so long lasting. Platinum Man is just not. Uh, with this director in the studio, I'm not sure if it's going to get like that. It's just going to be a shot for shot remake, I think. And they're just going to have some limited animation scenes. That's what I expect. But yeah, um, we'll see. I'm ex- I'm still moderately excited, but I'll probably just binge it all instead of watching it every week because I've already read the yeah. whole story. Yeah. So I'm not like I'm not like you know fiending for the. Some people might be. F- I think that there's some pretty solid cliffhangers in the manga. So I think that people might be fiending a little bit for next episodes if they mm-hmm. like the story. But yeah, we'll see. But okay. All right. Thumbs, thumbs, thumbs. Uh, yeah, it's a side for me. It's a side I'm like thumb. mid thumb, maybe. I'll probably watch it, but not. Maybe right give now. it a thumbs down. Everybody thumbs mark down. it down. Thumbs Everybody down. mark it down. I think I'm just gonna well, read it. I think I'm it's because gonna David's read gonna read it. I mean, you're gonna get this story because you sh- and everyone listening should consider reading it. I had a good time reading the manga. I think it's a really entertaining manga, but uh, we'll see how the anime does with it. Hmm. I don't know. David's gonna read it. I'll read okay, it. What's I'll up? read it and then what's I'll, the I'll binge it. All right. What's so the dog doing? The next, what's the dog the doing? next anime that we're gonna be talking about is called the Hike Story. Hikey, Hikey Story. 
Hai- think it's Hai- Monogatari. It yeah. I think it's Heike. Heike? Okay. I'm, I'm what they were saying, I think it was Heike. I thought, I thought they were it was saying Hai- it in. Oh, yeah, it's Heike. 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 Yeah, I mean, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> They were I, I mean, it in I think, the show. I think they were saying Haiki. I'm Haiki. trying to remember in my mind, like Haike, 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 because what it would be, it would be the H E symbol with the I subscripted, then the K E symbol. Yeah, Haike. 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 I think it's Haike Monogatari. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. It's it's Haike. Haike. These well, damn bastards. Bro- sh- no. Okay. Who does the description on this one? Right, I, I do. I do. I do. David, All right. Wrong. So, right. so this is a story. So this is really interesting because this was a um, like a very old Japanese story that was recently transcribed, and this is like the anime adaptation of that story. So yeah. this uh, in the beginning, we meet our main character. Her name is Biwa, which we learn later on. Um, she gives yeah. herself that name. It's kind of like a important part. And yes. so in the beginning. She's young. She's with her dad. You can tell that they are uh, uh, lower in the, I guess, like, it's not a caste system, but there is, like, there's royal, there's high class, and there's low class. She is low class. And she says some bullshit comments. Um, her dad is, like, saying, like, hey, stop. High class soldiers hear them. And she and the dad apologizes. And they're like, hey, we accept your apology with your life and then they kill him right in front of her and so then we kind of go into learning about the high class people and how they are um there's like a new ruler and and then the ruler meets biwa she's like i can see the future with one of my eyes he's like oh shit i my eye has a special power too and then he kind of adopts her and then uh, we, we kind of get the story set up to where uh, Biwa is like, hey, I saw the future. Your family about to die. And he's like, shit. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of shit. Your, your whole clan's going to die. And he's like, shit. And and he also, it's really, I really like the scene where they do meet for the first time. And she's yeah. like, my eye power is future. I see your whole clan dying. And he's like, damn, my eye power is seeing ghosts. I see your dad. I'm so sorry for killing your dad. And she's oh, like, I love, she's I, like, I love I the way that. he emotes. Yeah, in yeah, that scene it. where he's like, I, I, I can't believe our, our soldiers did this. Like the voice know. actors for those two just really sold it for me, dude. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, so that's kind of like the primary setup uh, that we all are, that we see in the first episode. Uh, yeah. I'm interested to see. The, okay, so the animation for me, I love how it's like, it's like classic, like like Eastern art. Kind yeah. of, I don't know how the best yeah. best way to explain. Yeah, it. No, that's the style. That's yeah. a good I mean, way. Yeah, a, yeah. It's it's like cla- it's like very like nostalgic, I guess, and mm-hmm. it's just very like the animation is super crisp and incredible. Yeah, it is. It's really interesting whenever Biwa like looks into the future, like the the style kind of changes a little bit. Well, not the style, but I guess like, the animation is just it's just super crisp and just very smooth and. I think this was a show that specifically we were told about because I didn't, I had no idea the show like was even yeah. in the season. Yeah, yeah. And I think it was like a comment from a previous one of our previous episodes. It was like, oh, you got to watch this, and mm-hmm. I'm happy I did watch this because this was really good. Yeah, it's awesome. so awesome we added this yeah. in last minute. You know, we had our 13, yeah. so just like with uh, what was the other show we added in? Uh, 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 the uh, arena, 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 so, arena. So we added this one in last minute mainly because there was a small amount of like really vocal supporters you know it was like a vocal minority in the community kind of talking about like everyone's gonna miss this show and so we were like okay i don't want us to miss it too because we did originally we didn't have it on our list because we totally you know it was we didn't notice it as we were picking our shows out um but we wanted to make sure to add it back in and i am so grateful that we did because i mean this was just uh a really impressive example of a great first episode Mm -hmm. to me you know World building, character development, dialogue, uh, scene setting, um, pacing, uh, music, art. Oh, the B Love music delivery. playing. Everything. Oh. I mean, top to bottom, this is this is one of those types of first episodes where it's like, great. This is where I'm ready to be in this world, and I'm ready to experience it. And I know I, the story is captivating. The I mean, it takes the simple like fish out of water context, 
but obviously there's this element of revenge. There's this element of like disowning the things that our the people before us have done, mm. the mistakes of our past. Um, you know, the main mm. guy, the the main ruler guy that yeah. kind of gets the girl in, that adopts the girl. He clearly is not happy with the like the decisions his clan has made. You know, the yeah. people that, you know, and he's clearly very disappointed in in some of the ways that the world is headed. And uh he's surrounded by all these I mean, these warriors. Right? Yeah, yeah, and, and there's yeah, and he's just like fuck, man. Yeah, he's like Yeah, he's like why are we going to war? We need to stop fucking doing that. And like, I think that's the type of character and scene setting that you just don't you don't get that out of a lot of modern anime's first episodes like yeah this is a i mean this is setting up for what could be a really powerful and you said it's based on like an old old novel and i think this makes mm. sense to me it's it's got it's a lot of times in novels you're going to have a lot stronger characters and motivation especially with the author is a good author and i think that uh pulling from that it, it came out i loved this first episode i was mind okay. blown honestly can i ask you guys though whenever the 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 lead the ruler i don't know if he's like the, the head of the house the head of the clan she, yeah she whatever he's telling the other guy what he's gonna do like apparently they go in a cost basically this dude's uh this this other you know imp, you know guys uh army and cut all their hair off yeah um, like, they is cut that the, supposed uh, to be like not. biwa is the one who performs that is that supposed to be like her in the future performing like that part of history because I don't I, I didn't take it as him like doing that it was just like oh. he was telling him what happening and that he was she was then telling the Biwa story like the mm. you know the sort of yeah oh I didn't even notice that Katie yeah. that older woman playing the is, yeah is she's Biwa. it's in solid wise yeah, Biwa yeah. an adult that's her in the fe- oh yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I, that's what I, I thought that was a, so another woman I you know what I mean like the history mm. yeah, she's yeah. clearly telling it's like be, it's, she's the narrator for our yeah. story essentially. Nice. That's what I thought, okay. but I couldn't tell like if it was no, her I think you're or right. if it was supposed to be someone else. Like I couldn't I tell either, but you bring it up. I, I it might it be her. her too. Yeah, yeah, it might be her. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh, that's, that cool. Cool. that's cool. I like that. I, I assume I like it was like, setup. since she could see the future, it was kind of like her narrating what the future could be. That's, right. That's that might be how, part of it. Yeah. Kind of how I, I Damn, that's slick. It. That's another slick storytelling device there. That's really cool. Yeah. The way, yeah. yeah, they use the they use the yeah the song. The it's a little, song. it's like a little bit ambiguous. So us as a viewer, we're going to slowly get to understand more of that. And I think right. that's the thing that I love about when a show can set up a really sprawling story um, without being too. I was remember earlier when I was talking about exposition dumps that do it poorly. This is an exposition dump that did it well. We learned I mean, a lot you know, about please. the the setting and the place, but not enough that I'm I'm I was overwhelmed. There was still more than enough character setting play you know other things that were coming about through character interactions and by yeah. showing us you know that's how i was learning about you know one of the my my favorite parts was the little boy comes back his ass got whooped you know mm-hmm. and i was like oh my god i looked at us and he, loud around the other guy so they whooped his ass they dog but they just, ass, yeah. it helps us to better understand the way that those people act the way they interact the way that they work um, and I think that's, uh, you know, they're, they're willing to beat the shit out of a little kid. Like when, mm-hmm. if they act out, you know, um, and that's sort of like, it elevates this story for me. Cause the story tell every, everything that was said meant like, I can tell there's some, like there is something to come. You know what I mean? I hate it when a story introduces concepts or s- puts hanging threads and like, doesn't care about there, there, mm-hmm. you know, it's wasted time or fluff. Nothing yeah. about this first episode felt like fluff. Everything felt like it meant something to come later. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, Especially with a, I don't know, like a psychic character. I feel like vision yeah. and things that you know, the way that we see it is definitely important. And so, yeah, yeah, I really like this one too. I would say, yeah, anyone listening, uh, <clears throat> it's a little different, but you know, be willing to give this type of show a shot. You know, it's a beautifully animated, really cool. The characters are a lot of fun, and the dialogue was really easy to catch. I mean, it was not hard to follow. Um, so don't feel like, you know, I felt like Odd Taxi, the dialogue was so fast, I think for some viewers, they were just it like, was, uh, you know, yeah. um, this is not that way, you know, it's definitely going to have that sort of sprawling drama and epic to it, but um, it, it felt easier to follow, it felt much more comfortable, and I think that if you're into kind of, if honestly, if you enjoy a good drama or mystery type story, I think this is a type of story that even though, despite the setting being like ancient feudal Japan, you can get a, you, this would be a good one for you to try out. That's what I would tell our viewers. Yeah. So, yeah, boys. Yeah. Other thoughts? Sorry, I might have no, collapsed no, all that. That's it. Uh, 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 this is a thumb up. Great show. 
Yeah, watch it. If you're Definitely gonna watch it. Watch I gotta try more. I gotta try more. I gotta try more. I gotta try more. So shout out to whoever the commenter was that told us to give it a shot. I'm happy you did, and we were able to add it into our list before we uh, did this episode. So yeah. All right, this one's this next All one's right, gonna be the final last two. two. Last two. Final two. Netflix originals. Yeah. Kenny, Blue Period. So Blue Period is about a boy who is a bit of a delinquent, but He's still studious. Yeah. Um and but he sort of feels lost, you know, like I don't know, like he like he's putting on a show, like he's a robot and he turns in his work and does what people tell him to and sort of can't express himself. And he finds a huge art piece by one of his uh senpais and sort of I don't know, has an emotional reaction to it. And so he begins to sort of I don't know, he does starts doing an art project. And he sort of finally feels like he can express what he feels inside, you know? And whenever his, like, um... And so, like, he doesn't spend enough time on it, though, because he still is kind of just, you know, he only cares about the grades, and... So he feels really hurt about it, um... But he feels really like he sort of expressed himself, um... And so he, at the end of the episode, joins the art club. He's like, you know what? I think I can do this art thing. Um... And so Blue Period's about art. It's about art. It's about art. What do you guys think? What do you it's guys about think? Art. I Blue Period for me, so I, I don't know if you listeners, if you know, I have a few volumes of manga in my apartment. He only has and, a few. Maybe like, and maybe whenever, like whenever, whenever 20, I, something like that. Whenever, I, whenever I rarely go out <laughs> no. and get new manga, um, specifically whenever I get a new Blue Period volume, I go home and I just, I read that. I, I read that volume so quickly. Blue Period... I was so excited to watch this, and I was so satisfied with, especially yeah. with this first episode. Mm-hmm. Um, there are the scene where he paints uh, Shibuya, and mm-hmm. he makes his blue Shibuya piece, um, and he's like floating. He's just kind of like ex- existing in it. It's kind of like a, um, it's not like happening in reality. It's kind of like just like a a surreal thing that happens. But seeing that animated was was really cool and also um like there's two scenes that really spoke out like stood out to me and i was very excited to see animated it was that one and also the scene where he gets complimented for the first time in his art piece and he just starts crying i was like this this is going to be a show that i'm really going to like so yeah so yeah i mean there's i i knew i was going to like it going in just from seeing trailers and watching it i was like yep i love it so yeah, just yeah. seeing like the coming of age story of uh, his name is Yaguchi. Yaguchi. Um, yeah, it was just awesome. So I'm excited to keep watching it, um, keep reading it. So yeah, really yeah. good. Kenny, I want to hear your thoughts. Do you feel like? <clears throat> do you feel like this setup feels sort of like a sports manga, but like a little? You know what I mean? It's kind of got like it's, it's kind of got like a sports shonen vibe. With like out being about a, sp- you know, if I mean art's almost a, sp- I don't know, you know right. what I mean. But Everything like- is competitive, is sort of what, yeah, yeah, right. There is the competitive aspect that he's competing to get into art school yeah. for into school. a very limited yeah. amount of spots. You know, that's what I'm saying. Very competitive, yeah. So, but it's also, I think it's more freeing in that sense. Like sport yeah. mangas, you follow things to a T, right? You this, this, this. It's like more it's team oriented. Like- I feel. Yeah, and he's, you know, he's definitely discovering himself through the art. You know. There are elements, I guess for me, like, I think what's interesting is that, yeah, this is a weekly show, or not a weekly, it might be a monthly shonen, actually. It's a a monthly shonen. Is it a seinen? Seinen. A monthly afternoon. I don't know what monthly, is that a sh- it's Kodansha a monthly, monthly book? Seinen. Uh, well, it is, pub- uh, Kodansha does publish the manga, but. No, are they the Japanese publisher? That's what I'm saying. Uh. They probably well, are. If, if, they, if they're doing it in the, in the yeah, U.S., yeah, yeah. they probably. Kodansha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's in the same magazine as Villain Saga. Yeah. Wave Listen to yep. Me. Topu that GP. same month that same monthly concept. Okay. Yeah. Lustrous. Yeah. Um, for me, what Blue Period does is it takes some of the concepts you would see in a traditional like um, sports manga. This whole like there's an end goal that's like kind of lofty. It's the end of their high school career generally. Um, puts him into a team where he's going to have to learn from everybody in the art club. He's going to have to learn elements of how to be a better artist. Just like how a lot of times 
in sports series, the the main guy ends up learning from each of his teammates. You know, one of them's really yeah. good at this or that. Um, kind of the same setup there. And even then, it immediately, I know that a little bit of a spoiler, but it introduces a rival essentially in the next episode, um, mm. which is another element that's super common in sports manga. You know, that there's sort of like a rival character that's also sort of competing from another angle to get to maybe the same goal as your lead is. So it kind of has some of those same elements, but it's doing it for something that's... Very, and also, you know, with sports, there's always like these cutaways where it's like explaining a way that a move works or a way a mm -hmm. sport this has the same thing but it's like explaining brush strokes and all the different expenses so for me blue period is just uh it's a different type if you're into something like sports shonen's sports manga um and you want something maybe the same level but maybe a little bit more on the the character building side mm -hmm. this is the type of series that might interest you um in that potential and overall i mean david kind of said it best like it looks great that they, they did a great job great. with there were some limited animation shots that i noticed but it didn't it didn't impede um the the viewer they did a good job not kind of lead like using what they had to still make it clear that like things were moving or things were happening and i think that's something that i really like when a studio can maybe use potentially a lower budget production mm. and um and still make it look high budget or high class. And I think that's yeah. always a really nice, impressive yeah. um, skill to see. I don't know what the studio is that did this show, but uh, I thought they did a pretty pretty bang-up job Seven arts. with this first. Yeah. Never heard of them. I really uh, like the um, I like the archetype, too, that Yaguchi is. The sort of nice yeah. nice delinquent or whatever. I sort of like that archetype. Yeah, I mean, he's and what's crazy is like his, his delinquent friends are like kind of charming and like supportive oh, yeah. what else yeah. to say? Say they're just like kind of regular people that's just it yeah. isn't they're not like manga delinquents they're just yeah. like dudes that sip, skip class and don't really care about their yeah they're just kind of anyways. regular guys but, there, yeah. there's a lot of really good in future episodes there's gonna be a lot of good moments with him and his friends so i'm, yeah. I'm yeah. really like his, his friends are really cool so i'm really excited you can tell that. from the first episode that there's a good setup for that yeah um but i mean yeah this is I say this is one of those like one to watch sort of shows. This I think yeah. that Everybody's it's already been a very it's already been a very successful manga series. You know, it won a lot of awards. It kind of did the circuit, and I think that a lot of people are already kind of drawn into the manga. And the anime adaptation seems like it's not going to let us down like some other adaptations have done before. Mm -hmm. So I think that this can be one to watch. And I got to give Netflix props for for snagging this one up. Like you know, they picked two shows to pilot their um, their kind of weekly release schedule with, and they. I mean, we're about to get into the Dude, second one, but they knew exactly what they were doing. Netflix, Netflix threw the bag at the anime studios and essentially said, "Give us the best, the best ones you got." Um, yeah. And this is what we landed with. And I think Blue Period makes it makes sense. And I think that everyone, if you're if you're in to shonen or seinen drama series, yeah. anything that involves rom, not even rom, not rom com, but just drama series that are focused a little drama. bit more on drama, maybe even the sports variety. This might be a series that you would uh, you could get behind. Um, yeah. But especially if you've ever been in an art class or ever been an artist before, just watch the show. This, you're gonna you're gonna be you see a lot of yourself in it. I'll just say that. Yeah. Um, Wait a second. Weren't you guys in art class? We were. We were both art students. Yeah. I think oh, yeah. This, this show is su it's super relatable. It has a lot of that You're relatability like, oh. if you've ever been in an art class or, or known people who are driven in the arts. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of that seems up. And I oh I forgot to mention. I love the way that this show handles um, the main other male character. They identify as male, but they dress like a female. Um, and I think this show handles that very, very uh, upfrontly. And I think in a way that's uh, really well done in mm -hmm. the first episode. And I, I'm excited to see more of how the relationship will develop. And I think the anime the two, did it better. The two guys. I think it was actually a little confusing in the manga. I agree. Uh, yeah, I, I like 100% agree. I think the whether it was like Netflix his translation choices versus yep. like Kodansha's translation choices or if it was like literally something else like maybe the dialogue was changed a little bit mm -hmm. um wait whatever no, netflix think, shows i think you mm -hmm. could i think she identifies as female i think okay it's, she i think it's more yeah i think it's um guy it's, but she's it's a yeah. trans character her, her gender identity is right trans identifies a woman yes this is, is a woman, trans right. character yeah yes this is a trans which character is interesting because there's a similar um, character in comey so which i, I yeah. really love about oh both really shows. yeah there's also this blue period also has a very masculine woman as well 
which I also yep. like. Oh yeah, so, someone who's do. born as a woman and then yeah. like a very masculine woman as well, oh, which yeah. I. It's also in the art club. Yep. <laughs> um, so another cool, tool, cool flip. But I, I think that that the other girl identifies as a girl. So, yep. um, but yeah. So really, some cool characters, some cool, really cool, cool choices. And I think that if you want to f- have one to follow, this is the show to follow this season for sure. Yeah, one of the two, because the other one that I'm going to talk about made me cry like a baby already. And same, it might, might be, might be, I might have to just drop everything and read the whole manga because this series is, I'm, I'm in love hey, with Jerry. Kobe. Kobe son will be blue, my blue period maybe tier two. Kobe son is instant waifu, just like fucking. I just don't know. Stand, okay, let me stand, just. I mean, wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's thumb. Let's thumb. Let's thumb. Let's, let's, let's thumb. Yeah, 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 yeah. Blue period. Thumbs, 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 thumbs up. Absolute thumbs up. Thumbs up. Okay. All right. Just before we even talk about Kobe, this show had no goddamn right being so well. It was so. It's beautiful. No it's fucking right. Wait, it Jerry. Was like fucking your name. It was the best animated show of the season. Jerry, what is what understand. is Toby can't communicate? Oh, I'm next. Yeah, Jerry, oh. you're you're it. The final show of our massive 15 show. We got through this pretty quickly, guys. We, we did, did good. David, well, please quality check. Make sure we talked fun. about all 15 of them. But I'm we like, did, I think did. this is the last one. We did because I'm like, oh, somehow we got through this super fast. Okay, the last show of the season of our 15 that we picked out is Comey can't communicate. The setup of this show is that we have what's his name to to dash uh, uh, regular white re- regular Tadano? regular, Tadano. regular Tadano. manga hero Tadano is a young man who's entering high school and he's very clear about one thing and that's that he wants to be under the radar doesn't want people to notice him he yep. just wants to chillax and coast through high school dog that's his one talent though Jerry um wait what <laughs> what's, what's his, his talent what's, what's his skill what's his ability what's his skill what's his one skill. He I is, forgot. He is perfectly he's pretty average. good at re- He's pretty good at reading the room. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he does say that. He's pretty good at reading the room. <laughs> Tadano wants to be totally normal, not interact. Blah blah blah. But obviously, on his first day of school, he ends up seated next to many consider the most beautiful girl in the class, um, Komi San, mm. and she is a very aloof person. Uh, doesn't really talk to people. Keeps to herself, but is beautiful, gorgeous. Everybody wishes that they could be around Komi San. Um, and he's seated right next to her. So he becomes the absolute, like, every... And here's the deal. The people in this class are, like, not normal. There's, like, a ninja that sits behind him or some yeah, shit, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, wait a second. <laughs> this is not a normal high school. Don't, don't they um, introduce that, like, halfway through the episode? They're like, bro, yes. all the fucking weirdos are here. And you're like, why <laughs> is he just here? here? So this average motherfucker surrounded by weirdos, and he is now... The center of their everybody hate you know they wish they could be because he's yeah. seated next to her, um, and obviously he uh, you know the scene that gets said essentially is that he passes out on his first day, wakes up at the end of the day, and Comey's the only one left in the room, and he realizes this is an opportunity to 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 see what she's about essentially, and Comey and him uh, sort of start a conversation, but Comey can't talk. Well, she can, but she she has troubles talking to people. And so he's approaches, pretty good at reading the room. So yeah, and one thing, so Tadano starts asking lots of questions and tries to understand what's going on. And she chooses to walk up. Uh, well, I think he actually says, "Why don't you write on the Why board?" Why don't you write? If you can, um, yeah. So she goes up to the chalkboard and starts sort of writing about how nobody, um, you know, she's never really talked to people. She's never been able to make friends. She's had all these struggles. We start to have this entire thing that uh, unravels, and Tadano continues to ask questions the same way, the same way, writing, 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 having this massive back and forth, slowly starting to uh, peel back Comey's layers to reveal that she's just a normal girl who has just as many insecurities, just as many issues, just as many problems as we might imagine any young high school girl to have. Um, but she's always just had trouble talking to people. And the one thing she's always wanted is just to make friends, whatever that might mean. Um, and Tadano says, okay, fuck it. I'll help you find a hundred friends. And Comey and Comey said, yeah. And Tadano said, make me number one. Uh And that sets off on a journey of Tadano and Comey to essentially, um, help Comey get out of her shell and figure out what comes next and, and how life can handle, you know, how to handle life and handle the many, the many anxieties and the many problems that approach us in life. So, um, it is one of the most wholesome, beautifully animated first episodes I've ever seen. And, um, by the end of that first episode, you're just sitting there with this. I, I mean, it's, it's like this dread of like, you know what it feels like to be 14, 15 years old. And it just like, 
not understand yourself, not understand what's going on, and have people constantly judging and thinking about you, and you just having a hard time to think about who you are. Mm-hmm. And, like, Tadano serves as this perfect, like, he's average. He's nothing, right? He's nothing. He's pretty good at reading the rooms. But the one thing we know, I mean, he, you say that, but, like, the one thing that's clear about him is that he, he um, seems to pretty genuinely um, uh, want to support people in his life. And that's, yeah. I, you immediately realize that this guy has no really ulterior uh, ulterior motive. He doesn't really have any negative motive. He just is like, okay, you know, I can help. Um, and that's something that you don't really see. And, you know, he's not trying to grope Comey or, like, be weird. You know, like, there's all these, like, you know, deviant manga and anime that are constantly mm-hmm. coming out with these sorts of same plots. But all of a sudden, you just have these two incredibly wholesome, thoughtful mm-hmm. characters that have been lucky enough to finally cross paths. And their two paths crossing is going to lead them on an adventure, is what I expect, with yeah. ninjas for some reason. Yeah, and, yeah uh, that um, interstitial where it was like, but actually, this school is fucking weird. <laughs> like, I loved it. I think that set me up for just so much. And just, oh my god, what a be- oh! I can't get over how beautiful the first episode is. The animation. animation. I don't think I've seen an anime bad. animated that beautifully. Yeah. So well done. In, in episode one. So well done. Clearly, whoever, no matter who the studio is, whoever the people they got working on it, clearly love this they manga. Love. Oh, yeah. They must love Comey Can't Communicate because they are clearly putting a lot of detail and attention into it's, making it. It's OLM. Incredibly well done. OLM. And they're pretty, I would use the word that they're like a, a workhorse. They're like a type of company. They that did just puts out, They just put out, there you go. They just yeah. put out manga and anime. Or they put out anime that are just competent. Generally, just always competent series that they try to pump out. Um, but I feel like they put out like a, don't they like do like a lot of stuff? They do like a they lot of like, like yokai watch, like Zoids, like card yes. fights. Oh, they do like long running stuff. Uh, Coming out like these long run kids shows type of things. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Um, that's crazy. Yeah. Like so Blade, you know, yeah. workhorse type of company. Um, so when they get the chance to really commit to something that that clearly, the obviously whoever the director is, I'd have to look it up. They must love this this manga because so much time and attention was paid to the little things in the show. And I got to admit, we got to f- say fuck you to Netflix on this one. Why? Because fuck you, Netflix. The whole decision, I was reading, I tried to look up some stats about this so that we could give the best perspective we could on this. One issue is that, you know, we all waited for the Netflix translation yep. and Netflix chose not to translate all of the phrases on the board. Um, they chose just the highlights and or specific phrases that they felt were imperative to the story. Those were the ones that we actually got translations of while we were watching along, which obviously, you know, I went and flipped open the manga. I read what all the other pieces of the board just to see it. It's not like it was particularly like necessary information. What was being written all over the board? You know what I mean? But like, it still would have been fun. You know, it's a part of their, their first conversations, you know, and we were get we were getting a lot of the small conversations as it was clipping through them, you know, Netflix would still translate some of the, the little conversations. But, yep. uh, yeah, for some reason, the big shots of all the board, we would only get a couple, you know, we wouldn't get all of the phrases that are being written. And for a show that's clearly about writing on writing to communicate, it seems weird that Netflix kind of made that decision. I mean, but I, I will say I did some research. I heard that potentially it has to do with Netflix's subtitling software. Um that oh. supposedly they have some issues with, like, I don't know. It's supposedly an outdated software, that, and there's always been some, like, rules at Netflix that they're only allowed to translate, like, the 35 most relevant words and phrases on screen. Um, I don't know. I was reading all sorts of stuff about, like, some Netflix policies, some outdated stuff. Beside the point, Interesting. If, you can't, if you can't give it your all, Netflix, because of whatever your fucking output levels are, um, then give it to another company. Don't, don't buy a Comey Can't Communicate. Right. Give it to someone else. This is the type of show that needs this sort of translation and this kind of, you know, this sort of care that was given. I mean, the animators and the people who worked on this clearly gave a a lot of fucks about this show. Mm -hmm. And to deliver it to an audience, essentially not fully translated, feels very um, disrespectful is the word that I would use. It just feels super disrespectful. It feels like Netflix literally was like, give us the most popular show. And then just shit a product out so that they can make money. Which, yeah. I'm not saying Netflix isn't... I mean, Netflix is our corporate overlord type of thing. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, yeah. Like, they're definitely <laughs> like they're definitely that. So, um, I just... I mean, it's just a bit of a bummer. Like, Crunchyroll probably would have translated all of it. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. And done a better work with it. 
And I'm sure Crunchyroll wanted this show. I'm certain that Crunchyroll wants the big stuff. So I'm Everybody. sure they wanted it. Yeah. And I'm yeah. sure Netflix just fought him off with the money bags. I'm like, Netflix probably showed up looking like the like, Mr. Hey, we'll Monopoly. Pay double. Yeah. Looked, they came in looking like Mr. Monopoly, like, bing! Is, isn't Crunchyroll <laughs> now like under like a part of Funimation now? Well, yeah, Funimation and Crunchyroll are both owned by, by Sony. By Sony, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, but they haven't merged. Uh, to my understanding, their workflows will stay separate mm. for the time being. Sony might have a plan to merge them, but for the time being, Funimation and Crunchyroll will Just still be acting separate. independently. Mm. Yeah. So, I, but I could see them merging them eventually. Right. So we'll see. We'll see. Although I don't know we, why they would. Guys, I would just keep having people pay for two. Guys, I already have been like, I've already been like listening to the Comey opening. It is like the best song. It's so good. I love that oh, song so much. It's, so, it's, it's the best my song. playlist. It's, the best song. Oh, it's my playlist too. Oh, it's so, I love it's, that song. And the opening cinematic just, too. No. The opening animation. Bro, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. David, it's so beautiful. I it's when so I read Comey when I started reading Comey a few months ago. And I went out and bought mm-hmm. everything. And right now, I think there's 15 volumes in the U.S. And I've read them all. Yep. I was like, if this is an- if this gets animated, I'm gonna watch it. And then I again with um fuck what was the other show? Well, anyway, with Comey, I would, did not expect it to look that it would so look amazing. as good as it's looked. And yeah. I'm like, I'm like, we're lucky and we're blessed if, that if we get a little bit. He gave us Comey can't communicate. He, yes, yes. He's, he <laughs> handed it from the heavens. Comey so is, and honestly, like, I don't like to waifu lies like, high school girls all the time, but, like, uh, just, Comey just, is Just straight. sometimes. Just sometimes. Sometimes, <laughs> just you sometimes. know. <laughs> Com- oh! Comey is waifu material, dog. I mean, just be honest. Like, Comey is straight waifu I like, material. I like Comey. Dog. I like Comey a lot. She is. I like Ninja. She, she, <laughs> Come, God damn it! One Kenny. of my favorite characters Comey. hasn't been introduced yet, but uh, Monbagi, I like. I like Monbagi. Okay, so there's more fun stuff. To- there's See, there's so- a lot of characters. There's a hundred friends she's got to make. Comey is one of those animes that just immediately gets me excited for anime. Like I, I, I walked away from the first episode just going, "Wow, this is like why we do this." Like this is the type of show that mm. yeah. I think ten, 10 years from now people might still be mentioning. You know, if they do a really good job with this season. Um, and maybe it'll go on for multi. I mean, there's a lot of manga to adapt. There's maybe we'll get a volumes. season two and season three. This is those types. One of those types of show that could be really, really long lasting. I have heard the manga might be coming to a close. Um, so uh, that'd be interesting if it does end up wrapping up in the next year or two. Uh, but maybe the anime is going to skyrocket it, and they're just going to keep pushing through. I don't know. Uh, um, no. <laughs> no. Hopefully, hopefully the author gets to end like it a, when like they real want to end it. Yeah. That's my hope. That's my hope. Okay, boys, let's give it a thumb. Hey, what what do you guys at home? What do you think the thumbs are going to be, guys? Just oh, ahead, they know what it's going to be. They know what it's going to be. We're thumbing up. This is the best show of the season, I think. There are four That's thumbs up. Um, oh yeah, best show of the season. Incredible, great show. I'm excited for Comey. I I hope that Netflix doesn't keep fucking up the translating, but whatever. yeah, there, right, there and there is a lot of Comey writing stuff like in notebooks or just like on things. Because she doesn't, I mean, she chooses to do that instead of speak. So, yeah, I hope Netflix doesn't fuck it up again. As long as it's just, like, single shots of, like, single things on screen, they should translate it. It's just yeah. when there's, like, a bunch of it that they probably won't. But I don't, like, can you think of any other scenes no, where there's, like, that, a bunch? No. I think that, the chalkboard that, the, scene is, like, a specific scene, yeah. you know? And then after that, it's mostly just, like, single notes or, let you yeah. know? So I think right. that Going should, forward, I think we should be fine. We should have any issues with it, but it's still disappointing that they kind of let that fall to the side on the first episode. But hopefully, ne- maybe Netflix will fix it if there's enough people who talk about it. Um, Has it already been the point? talked about a lot? Comey's great. Uh, a little bit. I, yes, I, yes, it's come up quite a bit. Okay, boys, you know how we wrap up these episodes. Bottom three and top three. Uh, is everyone ready? Or do you want me to start? I'll go first. I'll go first. Okay, David, bottom okay. three, top three. Okay, so bottom three, you got Deep Insanity. You got Arena the Vampire Cosmonaut. You got. Ooh. Come on, David. Uh, oh, that's actually hard. Uh, I'll say World's Finest Assassin. Those are my bottom three. Wow. Those are my bottom Surprising. Three. Okay, okay. My top three obviously, Comey Can't Communicate. Obviously, mm. Visual Prison. Obviously. I hate you. <laughs> Uh, no, no, okay. Yeah. Comey can't communicate that. Oh, leave visual oh, prison. You no! it in. No! No! <laughs> leave it. Leave it. Okay. Comey no, can't communicate. Visual prison. 
No, and he's still gonna get eaten. I'm, I'm keeping it in there. And he has okay, to. he already locked it in. And then the the uh, fuck, I need to learn how to pronounce this correctly. The Heike Ike Monogatari. Ike, yeah. Ike Monogatari. Those are my top three. Okay, Kenny. My bottom three are Miracle Chan, Deep Insanity. Um, and Platinum End. Oh, the pain. The I pain. just, uh, it was just, I was just so <laughs> happy. Visual Prison? I, I almost that's said a, Visual that's Prison. That's in his top three, one. Jerry. What are you talking about? At least oh, Guilty Cross uh, was good. Fuck. At least, at least I was jamming. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Uh, top three, Ranking of Kings. Comey Can't Communicate. I want to say Haiki Monogatari as well, but I feel like we're just all gonna pick that one. Like that one I mean, we're all gonna pick Comey, so pick your whatever you want. Whatever you want. Uh, yeah, I want I want Comey. What did I say? Ranking of Kings. Yeah. And yeah, Haiki Monogatari. I think. Sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I dig it. Bottom three is easy for me: Arena, the Vampire Cosmonaut, Deep Insanity, and. Visual fucking prison. What the fuck? <laughs> visual prison. Those three, those three all felt like a waste of Get my actual cross. <laughs> um, but th- we, this was an incredibly strong season, so it's really hard to pick the it top really three was. for me. Yeah, Comey can't communicate. Probably left the biggest impact on me, so I have to pick that one. Um, I think that Heike Monogatari is probably the second one. Like I said, it was just such a surprise. I'm really happy that we tried that one, and uh, I'm, I'll go for another one that you know. That's the two that all of us had. The third one for me really was Blue Period. I really liked yeah. the first episode no, of Blue I, Period. I agree, yeah. I'll put it up there as my top three. Just barely beating out Ranking of Kings, which is definitely like my a clear fourth to me. Um, yeah, I think that so, one I'm going to be most excited to yeah. watch every week. Um, so there we go. Um, my, and, my, uh, my, my real top three are Comey Can't Communicate, Blue Period, and The Heike Story. What's he saying? What's he saying? He's saying that he and I have is the same visual top prison? three. Visual no. prison? Visual um, prison? My my no, top my real top vi- three are visual prison, visual prison, and visual prison. No, David's no, favorite, favorite rapper actually, of all time. Here's David's top three right here. It's uh, Vampire Night, Vampire Night, Vampire Night, Vampire Night, Vampire Night, Vampire Night, Vampire Night. Yeah, it's <laughs> top five. Uh, okay, so based off of our top three rankings, that means obviously the top three shows of the season are going to be IK Monogatari. Uh, Comey can't communicate and Blue Period with a very close fourth being ranking of kings. Ranking Those are the King. clear, the clear top three, four ish from us here but at the Unsubscribe Podcast. Even still, Sakugan or you know, yeah, I, I feel like a couple of the shows have. have. Honestly, my senpai is annoying. I think it's Sakugan. Yeah, my senpai is annoying. Um, Taco, uh, the fucking Destiny, Taco P, like the music. Yeah. I mean, there's still some really other solid choices. Visual out Prison. There. Um, clearly, the the bummers of this season are things like Arena. I mean, just what the fuck was that with the fucking beat? I don't know, um, bro. I don't know. Uh, and uh, and things like, uh, what was the other one we all hated? Oh, yeah, Visual Prison. Deep, um, deep Insanity. <laughs> no, no yeah, oh, Deep Insanity. Yeah, I'm yeah. joking. Uh, but Deep it. Insanity was, yeah, that's shit tier. That's like, that's X-Arm tier. Um, uh, we're throwing yeah, that's, it. We're actually wadding Deep Insanity up and throwing it in the X-Arm basket. Well, um, I don't, I, you know, I feel like that's kind of an insult to X-Arm. X-Arm? Shut up. Is no. Uh, no, no, it's really an insult to Deep Insanity. I almost Let's agree be because Deep Insanity, I almost agree. No, they're both very bad. Well, boys, we've done it again. We made it through another uh, fall season. Another so season. Time for daiquiris. We dealed it up Jeez. and uh wheeled it up so thank you guys so much listeners for joining us again uh here on the uncensored anime podcast wow i killed it, so here on it? The uncensored anime it? podcast here on the uncensored anime podcast we're super grateful for your support and for those of you who have stuck with us despite we i mean we you guys know us at this point we take occasional hiatuses we did it one other time before sometimes we just need a couple weeks to not film anything but we're yeah. back in the groove we're good we do our thing we're gonna probably knock out a couple more episodes in the coming weeks we have two potential guests but i won't get your hopes up because uh they're both kind of maybes Basically, you know what i mean yeah. so it's we might have two more year, guests so. we might have two more guests by the end of the year but we might not it just depends on their schedules and if we're able to get connected with them and make sure that it happens other than that we have some potential other episodes that might be coming your way uh like we really want to talk about maybe the Star Wars anime that came out. We kind of missed that. Didn't really have any time to talk about that. The new My Hero movie just came out. There's a ton of new stuff that kind of just recently got announced. Things like um, Spy Family by Wit Studio. Oh, you guys. We'll <laughs> say, we'll say, trailer looks we'll so save, good. We'll say that for the next episode we talk about news, but oh, yeah. baby. Um, maybe but, Arcane, just, League of Legends. 
Maybe, there's, oh yeah, yeah. There's a, so there's a lot of fun stuff still kind of trickling out the rest of this year, and we want to make sure we talk about that as we watch it. Uh, but obviously, we have some other fun guests and other things planned. So hopefully, you know, stick with us, guys. Stick with us through the end of the year. See how we're going for the rest of the year, um, and see how the winter season starts early next year. Uh, you know, that's going to be an exciting time for us here on UAP because uh, there's some more new and great stuff. I mean, Worlds in Harem got pushed to winter, mm. um, which was one that was going to be on our list for this season. And they last minute were like, nah, bail. Even though the first episode did come it's, out, it's out, they yeah. pushed the rest of it uh, to winter. So we're not going to get the, the full show till winter. I'm excited to talk about that one. And winter's looking kind of, it's looking kind of horny is the word that um, I would use. It's a, it's a couple shows. always kind of horny, I feel yeah, like. Oh, I yeah, like, my, my dress up darling guy confirmed for an anime. Yeah, my dress up darling is yeah. coming as well. So 2022 is looking kind of horny. So I don't know, guys. Um, we might have to see where we go with that one. But. We'll see where we go. But, yes, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure that you like, comment, subscribe. Give us a five-star rating over on Apple Podcasts. Go follow us over on Spotify. All that stuff helps us to grow within the different algorithms on all of these websites and helps us to find more of an audience for our podcast, the wonderful podcast that you just listened to, right? So thank you guys so much. This has been the Uncensored Anime Podcast, and we're saying peace. <laughs>